Papa! Welcome everybody to Stavi's World. 904-800 stuff. Call in. We'll solve all your problems. Uh, I'm very, I'm very pumped to have my boy Doug Smith in the studio, ready to go. Ready to rock. Ready. Good to see you, dude. Haven't seen you in probably. I did. We do some weird in the middle of the pandemic illegal shows together. Were you on? I think Maybe we did Eastville? a couple of those. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah oh yeah. That weird pop up Eastville show. Yeah. Weird pop up. We're by the hotel and. <laughs> No, no, oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. I forgot about that one. But were you at the Eastville shows where it felt sketchy and you were like, ah, what are the odds someone has COVID? And then there was a COVID outbreak <laughs> in the middle of it. And I only yes. didn't get it because I was like, I was on my, you know, MSNBC lib shit uh-huh. and like stayed outside when it wasn't my spot. And in, the th- in my head, I'm like, dude, you're being a fucking pussy. Just go in there. You already decided to go. And I was like, don't. You're going to stand outside, you know. Yeah. And uh, yes, I believe not to throw the man under the bus immediately, but I believe it was a Kosh Singh that was <laughs> patient zero for like a huge comedian <laughs> COVID outbreak. And I just, uh, his spot was right before. I gave him a fist bump. No, uh-huh. no dap. And then and maybe your knuckles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, <laughs> mm, delicious. Um, but yeah, I just remember. I, I feel like you were on a couple of those. We were, you, that was probably the last time I I bumped into you, and it, with any regularity. Yeah, was those dude. Weird was this weird COVID where every comedy club owner was just trying to not go bankrupt, and they're right, like, right. I don't care. I got. We have I to start th- shows. I think I got clobbered by. Akash, I think it was him. I, oh, I so I was I was supposed to go to Costa Rica <laughs> in like in like two, in two, was it 2021? Yeah, April of 2021. Yes. I think that's when it was. Okay. And uh, my wife like was telling me ahead of time like just be careful doing shows, wear a mask. Right, and I was like, right, okay, right. you got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, whatever. Did not. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, dude, the morning we were supposed to leave. Woke oh up feeling like God. fucking ass. The morning. And I kept it, and we, we were supposed to leave at like 4 a.m. too. So I woke oh. up at like 4 a.m. feeling like ass. And I was oh, like, no. I'm not telling anybody anything. I'm just going to take a rapid test. Yeah, yeah, It was yeah. positive. I was like, that's a fluke. I'm going to take another one. Took three fucking <laughs> rapid tests back to back to back. <laughs> and then I woke her up like a like a kid who just pissed the bed. I was yeah, like, I got to yeah. tell you yeah. something. <laughs> She would have rather you cheated. She would have rather you got jacked off once. No, nothing, you know, sensual. (laughs) Just one fucked up hand job instead of one blindfolded jack off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of ruining the whole vacation. Right, right. (laughs) Did she go with your kid? No. (laughs) That would have been awesome. I know, right? That would have been a power move. (laughs) Yeah, right. She's like, all right, no worries. I got somebody to go in your stead. Yeah, exactly. Henry from the office will come. Couldn't have blamed her, man. Damn, that's oh, brutal. Dude, I felt like such an asshole. Yeah, yeah. And here's the what a piece of shit I am. I almost, yeah. I was trying to plead with her, like, we can still go. I'll just <laughs> quarantine once we get there. You know, fresh. Let's just go. You're, you're yeah. <laughs> you're you're shedding viral load after viral load yeah. on that airplane, but you're like, it's not a big deal. That's the level of martyrdom. Yeah, yeah. I have. <laughs> For the greater good of the family. And I'll but be, not the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For my family and everybody on that fucking trip can I'm, I'll ruin a bunch of vacations <laughs> yeah. instead of just our vacation. Yeah. I'll ruin everyone around me's vacation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent point, Doug. But real fast, I want to tell you and all our listeners about our newest sponsor. DraftKings. That's right, baby. College football's right around the corner, which means NFL football's around the corner. We got the MLB playoffs, and you know me, you know I'm a big hoops guy. But life's more fun when you got a little action on it, right? So why don't you, right now, with our friends at DraftKings, go on, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use code STAVI, S-T-A-V-V-Y. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on college football. Week one's right around the corner. So go do that right now. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code STAVI, S-T-A-V-V-Y. Okay. But that's what they get that for matter. traveling during the pandemic. Right? You should have yeah, exactly. flipped immediately. You're like, that's what they deserve. <laughs> they, knew, they know they're putting themselves uh, in harm's way by traveling mm-hmm. during this deadly na- international pandemic. Yeah. Uh, that's to be expected. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's we were, and we were also just talking. So we, you know, Doug's very. For those of you who don't know, Doug's a very funny comic. You also have a new pod out. Let's say it I right do up have a top. New pod. It's called so Jehovah Boy. Jehovah Boy. Which, by the way, I didn't 
and we've you know we've been friends basically since I moved to New York from from early shows, uh, which uh, I've been here like nine years now, and I knew that you had a weird fucked up life off of just you could do echolocation off your act. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I feel like I know. My, I feel like we don't really talk. Comedians don't real anything we know about each other. It's just slivers yeah. from our act where it's like, oh, interesting. That's what he's letting on. So there must be more to that. Because every, every joke is like the tip of an iceberg where it's like, you mentioned a little something and yep. there's so much more underneath that. Sure. And so now once you your pot is about being Jehovah's Witness, I'm putting it all together. And I'm like, oh, you had an old ass dad. Yep. That seems like something a weird religious person would do. Just keep <laughs> fucking into their golden years to keep to keep the like, you know, the the brain more brainwashed people in the world. Sure. And then you had adopted siblings uh-huh. and that's like, oh, that's another that's another thing weird religious people do. Not to say that yep. your your family's a bunch of weird religious <laughs> people, but it's like, okay, that you got a couple different adopted siblings and yeah. the one that I couldn't mesh with it is that you had a joke about being related to Ulysses was it Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant? Yeah, 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 and yeah. to me that's so weird to be like my family's been here since the Civil War and somewhere we were like let's go Jehovah's with it because that's <laughs> interesting because I thought because when you said old dad because before the revelation because I saw your your clips pop up and shit I'm yeah. like Doug's fucking Jehovah's Witness this fucking just w- regular ass white man that I know. <laughs> yeah. Jehovah's Witness. That's the most confusing <laughs> yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. People are like, well, you're not black. One of the most standard <laughs> white men I know who's related to a, a general from the Civil War <laughs> is fucking is, is uh, Jehovah's Witness. Um, but you know, but that but the rest of it kind of you know completely completely right. lined up. But you yeah, know. I mean, I remember we. Do you remember we did a gig? Jesus, I want to say like fuck probably like maybe 10 years ago we did a gig with list at levity live oh my and then we god we dropped yeah. him off and yep. drove home yes, together yes Remember that? yes we dropped him off and like it was him and and was it anyway yes i do remember what you're talking about yeah really dropped him off in the city somewhere we, we dropped or something. him off you know what it was it was we dropped <laughs> no one gives a fuck by the way <laughs> it was just a different guy that also opened for joe it was a guy doing a guest spot and we dropped him off on in Harlem yes, where he yes, lived. Yes, yes. Joe, I think, got home either somewhere Still somewhere else, yeah. or he came with us because you know Astoria. But yes, I remember that gig. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We had we had a we had a pretty deep dive on our on our past history yes, on that. Yes, drive yes, home. Yeah, that's yeah. you get you get those deep dives there in those drives drives home. But like yes. the Jehovah thing, really still slobber knocked me i don't you know it's right. it still is like one of those like how the fuck did that happen yeah. and you know and that's and also i mean there's so many so many things i want to ask you about just the ulysses grant thing how is your family that old and then when did the jehovah shit like pop up mm-hmm. and then we haven't even gotten into the fact that we're talking to a hero here elders <laughs> this fucking guy stopped stopped the assault on the train yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got a kid. A lot to talk about with our boy Doug. And he's a funny guy. I mean, we don't actually let not funny people on this podcast, folks. <laughs> but with all these, you know, with all the being interesting, being that interesting rarely is a person funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where they have so many attributes where it's like, uh, you're just like an adventurer. Like maybe it's a little bit of the facial hair, but I could also, in my head, I'm like, Doug could have been like a pirate, a swashbuckler. You know what I mean? That's funny. Because because That's, of the damn, because of the scar, only. right, right, right. <laughs> because of the cool scar. <clears throat> yeah. Which, by the way, let's say already married when he did it. No chance yeah, to cash in on all that. Stop the rape on the subway, pussy. He was gonna never get cashed in, man. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you do something good, folks, yeah. to cash in on other reasons, not not due to integrity. But I guess Jehovah's teachings kicked in right yeah. then and there. If I could go back in time, <laughs> would I go back to the time of swashbuckling or back to 11 years ago and undo my relationship? <laughs> yeah, right before you get on the subway, you ask for a divorce, yeah. and then you foil the assault. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, dude, sorry to fucking... I just threw, like, eight different things about you 
at you w- good, without it's, asking a single it's a question. Lot, it's a lot. <laughs> somebody, somebody said to me the, uh, a couple months ago, like they were kind of rattling off so, some of the similar yeah, yeah, things. Yeah, They're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're basically like a modern day Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you? So you went? We were talking the whole because I have a friend. I have a very good friend who like. His it's a weird situation where his mom kind of his dad was very Greek Orthodox yeah and then his mom kind of hid how Jehovah's Witness she was until they were married yeah and then she tried to kind of like sneak some sneak the some Watchtower shit yeah onto them but you know his his Greek ass dad like what started going crazy like no you know that's like devil worship you know that kind of shit yeah so like how in the mix were you were you really in there were you really oh yeah we get little the little the little fucking Deep ties in it, and everything. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. The clip on tie, the, the clip short sleeve dress shirt. <laughs> yeah. No birthdays. And I had glasses when I was about six years old, too. So <laughs> oh, I yeah. look like fucking IRS from yeah. the WWF. <laughs> IRS. Every time I showed it at somebody's door, they thought it was, they were going to get audited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, IRS, by the way, quick tangent. Erwin R. Scheister. Yeah. <laughs> it was a Jewish character in the WWF. Not played by a Jewish man, by the way. No. Nope. Just a guy making fun of Jews. He was named IRS Erwin R. Scheister. What a beautiful time for yeah. sports entertainment in our country. Still when alive, you, by the way. Yeah, One they, of the few wrestlers from the late 80s, early 90s <laughs> that did not OD in a Holiday Inn somewhere. He's still, yeah, he's still, he's still, uh, we looked him up recently. I don't remember when. But, yeah, um, yeah he's still like... And you hear something like that, you're like, wow, that must have been like a hundred years ago. Yeah. And the guy's like, you know, 58. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like, he's just like a very normal, like that was just like so very recently. Yep. So you're in there, you're, you're. <clears throat> yeah, man. Little ass kid. I was in it from, yeah, from the time I was born. So my mom, uh, yeah, she converted shortly after my parents got married. Okay. Somebody came to the door. So here's something I didn't find out until recently. So my, okay. some J-dubs, Same. uh. Nah, fuck it up. We just had a pa- someone's doing a package, I guess, but they can suck my dick. I don't think I ordered. I don't think I ordered anything. Okay, so your mom. So yeah, yeah. Hit me with it, dude. So they they came to the door uh, while no. my dad was home. My mom was my mom was w- working at some like like uh, women's boutique. Okay. And and uh, where'd my you grow dad, up? I grew up in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Okay, nice. <clears throat> so my dad had to come home from work every day to let the dog out. So while he was Hilarious. home for like an hour, they happened to swing by the house, knocked on the door. He answered the door. They gave him the whole pitch. About, and it worked know. on him? No. He said, this isn't for me, but come back tomorrow when my wife is home. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Your dad's like, nah, dude, not my thing. Yeah, but dude. my dumbass wife, she's really yeah. gullible. Yeah. She loves dumb bullshit like this. <laughs> You want a dim-witted broad. That's insane that he was like, come back. To fall for this. I'm, yeah, I'm too strong-willed. I got the gal for you, yeah. I have a college education, <laughs> but my brain-damaged wife might fall for this. <laughs> was your was your mom much younger than your dad, too, or were they about no, the same age? No, well, she's five years younger okay, and so smart, too. Crazy. Like, they, smart. Both, they yeah. both went to college, both grew up, you know, yeah. fairly... Uh, you know, wasp Dude, that's, privileged, you know, not Jehovah's Witnesses, like most of their converts are people that are fucking desperate. Of course. You know Convert, I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's preach. Yeah, you're preaching to people who just want they pray on the, the mentally ill yeah. or like <laughs> yeah. recovered drug addicts and or you people know that have had your, tremendous loss. Your you time know? door to door. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah. when you saw someone fucking strung out, you're like yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Doug's time to shine. <laughs> oh, your husband just died? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, your child perished in a tragic hit and run? Well, you know, you, do you know what? You want to see him again? Yeah, do you want to see him on your own little planet? That's my favorite part. You guys get little planets like it's Dragon Ball Z. There's like, everyone has their own little, like, fucking. Like who's that guy King? Who's the guy where they were trained and they had his own little last planet? That's ba- that's my conception of what Jehovah's Witness promises. Is, isn't yeah. there like? It's basically like isn't heaven like this tiered system where there's like a hundred and fifty like six <laughs> like suites? Like if 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 isn't heaven this, is a hotel, yeah, right, yeah. If you're really fucking good at being a J Dub, right, they give you your own little planet, almost like a fucking <laughs> sick hotel suite. Right, they've got like a hundred suites with a you know 
two rooms and, and you know, a bathroom and a fold-out couch and two TVs. <laughs> oh, you got it to work. Good job, Eldis. This is my favorite thing is hearing people's preconceived notions yeah, yeah, about yeah. J-Dubs. <laughs> and they're often very close yet yeah. very off at yeah. the same time. To my, yeah, the, to my understanding, if you're awesome, you get, like, your own planet. And there's a fixed amount of those. But the most hilarious thing about it is, like, when I correct people, it doesn't make any more sense. <laughs> right, right, you know? right, 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 right. Actually, it's 144,000. <laughs> <laughs> and it's this planet that is transformed into a paradise where people will live forever. Oh, it's this one. I mean, it's not fucking science so, fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so they just spruce up Earth. Yeah, which it's is a rehab. So you're yeah. telling me heaven is a fucking rehab? <laughs> yeah. I don't even get a new, like, they, they just, like, they fucking, uh, it's like a gentrified house. It's like yeah, basically yeah, yeah. they do to they do flip to this house. It's Jay, an episode of flip this <laughs> house. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like when when like a developer goes to Bed Stuy and takes like a an old brick home and turns it into all like glass and metal and stucco and shit like that. Yeah, just big big windows. Yep. You know that's yeah. so fucking funny. Yeah. So one hundred forty four k. So they be, yeah, be, bring give, it down I'll give for you the us. crash course. So like they believe that that Armageddon is near, okay. and they've they've been saying this since since they formed in like the early 1900s. Oh wow. Armageddon is near. So they falsely predicted Armageddon coming in 1914. <laughs> okay. 1914 came and went. They're like, up, oh, we were off off on the math. Wasn't uh, that wasn't that the flu pandemic? They could I think have, you're they right. They could have tried to like. I think you're right. Well, that's that's another bit. thing. That's another not to get off on too much of a tangent. No, no, but like please. Every Every sort of uh, uh, natural disaster or any sort of uh, or political uprising or any sort of, sort of world event that's like cataclysmic, they point to that as like, see, the end is near. This is a sign of, oh, sign of the times. They you must know? have had a hard on for 9-11. Oh, dude. <laughs> that must have COVID, it, yeah. I'm yeah, sure. COVID for sure, yeah. You're you know, out of the, the game Trump now, era. But, I mean, yeah. oh, yeah, dude. It's all it's all just fodder but for but Look, stoking this fear-mongering Let's not try flame. and get COVID in with 9-11. 9-11 <laughs> must have been so awesome for them. Yeah. They're like, it's finally happening. We're going to nuke these fucking... You know we're gonna we're gonna just completely destroy the Middle East. It's gonna then Israel's gonna nuke. Then in the, you know they they probably in their head were like it's fine. Yes. Do you, the funny yes. thing is I I left six months before nine eleven. Wow. And I was in the city. I was going to SVA. I went to School of Visual Arts. Wow. I was in the city that morning. So when I oh my, my art God. teacher got the phone call from his wife. Planes hit the World Trade Center. I was like, "Fuck, it's happening!" Yeah. Oh yeah, you were, <laughs> you were fret. You're like, "God yeah. damn it!" Yeah, um, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like quitting the team and then they win the state championship. It's exactly. like your senior year. You're like, I don't feel like going to football practice. Yeah, and then they fucking get the state championship, dude. Yeah, they were right yeah. after all. Oh, but yeah, dude, dude. Anytime there was like a like you know if there was like a, one of those thunderstorms where the sky turns green, you like looking out the window in class, being like, oh shit, uh, all these motherfuckers go. are gonna get nuked. Yeah. I'm just going to be sitting on a pile of rubble. Yeah. All my class Yeah, meditating. Yeah. Perfect. I'll have, a, I'll have an, a Jehovah's Witness energy shield <laughs> protecting me as nuclear as the nuclear yeah. holocaust happens. Yeah. 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 We get to live forever in a paradise, all of us riddled with PTSD <laughs> yeah. by watching everybody obliterated around us. So, ba oh, so the idea is whatever, ha it all happens, right? Yeah. So, they, so, so basically they, it's a reverse rapture. Exactly. Where yes. you stick a around. Reverse if you're rapture. cool, you stick around. If you're cool, you stick around. Exactly. And reverse rapture is the perfect way of putting it. Love that. Okay. So they falsely predicted it a bunch of times. 1914, 1975. <laughs> yeah. Then again, 75. in 2000, they kind of jumped on the Y2K <sighs> thing. And now, thankfully, they've like learned their lesson. Now they're just like, it's close. Trust yeah, us. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, coming. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't like assign a date to it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they basically believe that anybody who's a non-believer, which is 99.9% .9 yes. of the population, yes. when Armageddon comes, will just be fucking obliterated. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. And, Go to uh, hell or just stop existing? Or just stop what? existing, just okay, dead. That's pretty fair. Yeah, yeah, not so that's bad. That's not right? bad at all. That's, that's kind of really what I think. There's a pretty good chance that it just happens anyway. You know, like <laughs> exactly. <that's>, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there might it's be a, something, but you know, it's a quick, painless death. Yeah, yeah. You know? I like that. That's not so bad. Would you rather pancreatic cancer or a fireball no. to the head? You fireball know? right to the. <laughs> <laughs> and do, are they? Is the devil doing this? In no, it's Jehovah doing this. Jehovah's Jehovah doing, doing this. Oh, he's he's okay. given he's given the you know human population ample time right, to, to see the light, and and come to the. 
come to his side, and if Damn. they fail, they, if they refuse, <laughs> come here, <laughs> It's all Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God in heaven being like, ah! <laughs> just killing every fucking non Jehovah's Witness with a big ass fireball, yeah. the big energy ball. He's been saving up. God's been tr- God's been training to destroy all of Earth. Yeah. That's what's taking so long. God ha- God isn't at the right power level yet right. <laughs> to, to, to fucking incinerate us. But he's up there doing pull ups. <laughs> we should start a new version of Jehovah's Witness that's kind of a Dragon Ball Z Jehovah's Witness fusion. Yes. We would clean up, dude. We would fucking clean up. We would have so many anime nerds in our in our fucking in our uh, teachings in our ministry. <laughs> dude, okay, the whole sick. time Armageddon's happening, I'm now just going to be picturing Jehovah with like the close zoom on his dewy <laughs> trembling <Yeah>. eye. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. And that Some infinity guy sign God. smile, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, So um, where are the planets coming? No one gets their own planet. Did I no just, planet. So that, I so could have swore <laughs> someone got their own little planet. I mean, I'm not. I don't fault you for thinking that. So, okay. so he he nukes pretty much the entire human race okay. except for the the. So there's eight million. Practicing Jehovah's Witnesses right now, worldwide, right. which is a pretty good number. That is I'd actually, say they're the yeah. most successful doomsday cult yeah, by yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so these 8 million survivors will basically just be left on this, you know, post-apocalyptic husk of an earth. Does it get a facelift or anything? Yes. It does. Yes. Okay. So apparently, like, over the course of, like, a thousand... And this is where things get a little bit blurry. I'm still okay. not entirely clear. <laughs> this is where it gets to be bullshit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This it makes <laughs> perfect sense up until now. <laughs> I was on board <laughs> until they spelled this one thing out for me. <laughs> so basically, like over over the course of a thousand years, there's like this this cleanup that will happen where the That's earth is slowly a long transformed. Time. I know, and it's like, are we responsible <laughs> yeah, for the cleanup? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 we're yeah, just yeah. wearing like a reflective vest yeah. on the side of the highway, <laughs> yeah. you know? just picking yeah. up trash, picking up picking, <laughs> picking up, up non-believer skulls. skulls yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that sucks. So at that point during the cleanup, you don't, it's heaven essentially. So you don't age and you don't feel pain. So yeah, basically the survivors will, when the earth is transformed, I guess from that point on, yeah, the earth will be transformed into a paradise. Okay. Where, you know, as earth was originally created, a paradise earth where man and beast will live as, as one as in one. perfect oh, so you harmony. Can fuck dogs now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You get pussy from zebras. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it won't bite you or nothing. <laughs> Damn, are you not? But yeah. then do you have to go vegan? Is it now murder to have a steak? <laughs> Jehovah's got to think that I it's think cool so. that you can fuck the cows, but <laughs> yeah. I want ribs every once yeah. in a while. <laughs> both, both part of it, both parties got to be having some sort of pleasure okay, in the process. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah, I think everybody would then be vegan if you're supposed to be. Fuck, you know, that yeah. sucks. Maybe maybe part of the thousand years of making it awesome is they really like lab grown meat technology. Is the st- the st- or do you get magic? Could you just like wave a wand and you have a steak and it was cruelty free? That could, I mean, so that's the thing. There's none of, this, none of this is implausible compared we to what need, I've already told I'm you. I'm telling you, Dragon Ball Z Jehovah's Witness, <laughs> we're going to make it, dude. We're going to do it because I have I know how heaven's going to go. You can fuck all the animals and you can fucking do a wand and you have any meal you want, but it's not you didn't harm anyone. Yeah. In fact, maybe you get a steak. How about this? You get a steak if you make a cow come. <laughs> it's like you have to earn your meat by sexually pleasuring whatever animal. Or, you know, maybe not sexual pleasure. Maybe it's like you get them a gift. You know, let's not be crass. There's going to be cow whores, but there's also going to be nice cow, you know, ladies and, sure. you know, like proper cow grandmas. So yeah. you get them a little a little. Some petunia. you may have to court a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. just saying you, you're a good neighbor to your cow. You know, you're like, here's a flower. Right. And, they're like, and then you get granted one steak credit. <laughs> You know, you have to do a, you have to do a kindness to whatever animal you're gonna eat, and you. So we're, we're gonna figure this. I would, awesome. lo- I would love. I that. love coming up with a fake religion, dude. This is great. I know. I'm ready to like worship a sick god. <laughs> yeah. Like there's there's people whose religion is like they believe like 
we're a super sophisticated like Sims like simulation. Right, right, right. I'm like, yeah, bring on that Dragon Ball Z guy. Dude, I'll be like, that well, sucks. Maybe there is the simulation there. sucks. Is what? It's some fat guy playing Sims. No, <laughs> yeah. I want Dragon Ball Z God. I want to fuck. I, I want the God you think god. of. Yeah. yeah, no incel god. My God gets pussy. Yeah. In fact, he gets to fuck Bulma. <laughs> That's canonically part of it. He's not Vegeta though. He's kind of like Goku and God together, but he fucks Bulma because I find Bulma the hottest in my personal tastes. I can't wait to Dude, come I, up with the god. I love the idea of like because you know going door to door, people are like, oh, I'm Judah, I'm 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 Jewish, I'm Buddhist, you know, yes. all these things yes. like deflections. Like I can't get on board with this belief system. I would love to have somebody talk to you, and be like, this is all cool, but can I eat steak? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get down to brass tacks. <laughs> I would love, dude. We should have fucking next time you come on, we should bring like. A door to door guy, and he should try and com convert me and Eldis. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should have like fucking, you're kind of like the referee. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're kind of like, you know, hey, hey, come on, that's not right. Um, and we kind of have a guy try and like win us over. That would actually be an awesome podcast. That would be sick. <laughs> we invite a Jehovah's Witness to try and convert us. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so anyway, yeah, they, yes. they, they believe that the earth will be transformed. Man and beast live as one in perfect harmony forever. And then, and then here's where it gets. Yeah. Here's, here's where, where gets, the goes off the rails. It's kooky after that. Uh, all Jehovah's Witnesses who have died before Armageddon happened will be resurrected from the dead. But only after it's already refabbed. Re yes. Yeah, rehabbed. yeah, yeah. Okay. Which they should put them they to should, work, Yeah, right? what the fuck? They should be involved in this. You were wrong process. about 1912 being the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, and I got to do yeah. all this I landscaping. Gotta fucking mess. <laughs> I got I to install a koi pond in my backyard to up the property value of Earth for Jehovah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so they will be resurrected, and then... Uh, so that's another, you know, that's another reason they prey on people that have experienced loss. Gotcha. You know, like, oh, you got a oh, you got a dead kid. Well, come to us, you'll get to see him again. You'll be reunited. Him. Yeah. Um. So they'll be resurrected, and then one hundred and forty four thousand who have received a divine calling, which mm. you know, mm -hmm. that's just it's on an honor system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> will rather than be resurrected, or uh, rather than be resurrected to live on Earth will ascend to heaven to rule with Jesus over this paradise earth. Oh, wow. Which, again, is a question of, like, if it's a perfect paradise earth where everybody everybody's perfect, yeah. what ruling, what are you guys doing up there? Yeah. You know? Interesting. And how does that, how is that a win? You know what I mean? Yeah, you I just imagine them looking down on people on earth. Yeah. Like, Dude. At a pool. Yeah. Getting pussy from a flamingo. <laughs> 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 having buffalo, having just a, uh, uh, just buffalo steak. Cause you, cause you, cause you helped his son, a buffalo son learn Spanish or whatever. And now I'm up there looking down. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. 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 It that doesn't sucks. sound like a win at all. Right. Okay. So that's where, that's who I thought got their own planet. Right. I thought the 144 <laughs> they had their own planet. Yeah. I really no. did think they got their own planet that was like a mini Earth that they they're, could just hang out on. They're stuck on this shithole. So, okay, just, Dragon Ball Z Jehovah, which we start, you get your own planet. There you go. <laughs> you get your own planet. <laughs> See, that's much more enticing. <laughs> that's so cool. I think they need to bring you on board with the governing body. Yeah, because you don't want to have to do a jo wor job. No. I mean, no. hanging out with Jesus, that's probably cool. If you believe he yeah. exists... You want to meet the guy. Sure. And like down there, they're like, hey, what's he like? It's like, oh, dude, he's actually so, like one of the most down to earth guys. <laughs> when you go down to visit every once in a while. You talk about it while you fuck a cow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus is awesome. Yeah, he's a really sick dude. A private guy, private guy. But yeah. really, when you get to know him, funny too. Very funny. <laughs> and just doesn't take it too serious. Doesn't take himself too seriously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he lets us have casual Fridays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I always wonder about that. Is everyone naked? Yeah. Do you have a cool tunic? <clears throat> That's why Dragon Ball Z, Jehovah's Witness, is kind of taken care of. You get to choose whatever cl clothes you like from Dragon Ball Z. There you go. You could be dressed in the traditional orange Goku suit. You could be wearing what Saiyans wear. But you can wear what regular humans in DBZ that background care. Blast thing. Yeah, the the <laughs> the um the tracker, the his power level, the thing that well, I forget what it's called, scanner, the scanner. Everybody yeah. that's resurrected has a spiky sonic you can, yeah, yeah. hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have that hair if you want for sure. A <laughs> lot of options with Dragon Ball Z Jehovah's Witness which we have just started. 
We'll but talk the, to my little brother, see if we can <clears throat> fold that into the Church of the Earthly Dagger. My brother's in the middle of starting his own. He might be having a you know mental health crisis. Is this the artist? We're not exactly. Yeah, we're not exactly. Dude, sure. I love his stuff. It's Thanks, awesome. dude. Hey, come to Baltimore and go, go to the exhibition. Bring the family. <laughs> we're putting on a big show in a couple weeks, but um, yeah, no, his stuff's awesome. But yeah, he started. He started. He started talking about being. Uh, God's earthly dagger. <laughs> he started talking about that, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, but it makes about as much sense as uh, oh yeah, witness yeah, yeah. indoctrination. <laughs> but I'm trying. Let's see if we can fold that all in. If this could be what the Church of the Earthly Dagger is, Eldis. I a- think we could squeeze it all in. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can find a way to explain it, dress it up real nice. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. So you were out there. So this that's fascinating. So before your mom, before your, not even your mom got convinced, but your dad, while letting the dog out, was like, just come back tomorrow. Like, yeah. that's also fascinating. What did your dad believe? Like, was he just a not, was he just... He was, ra- he was raised uh, Protestant. My mom was raised Episcopalian. So okay. both, you know... Sex of Christian doesn't mean anything to me. I hate yeah. I hate how there's one hundred different. I know, right? It's like, well, who gives a fuck? Yeah, what's the and, fucking and difference? All the differences are so like, I even so I'm Greek Orthodox. You know, we're 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 both Orthodox, um, and Orthodox and Catholic. There was some split, like, you know, whatever two thousand like a thousand years ago about such bullshit. It's like our creed is a little different. One of us believes that. One of us believes that it's literally his body and blood, mm-hmm. and one of us believes that it's symbolically, which is like hysterical. And it might be us. I don't remember who thinks it's literal. I think it might be yeah, us. I feel like the Catholics have to think it's literal. Well, no, no. I think we do because we still drink the wine and uh, shit. All they do is a little fucking bitch ass wafer. Although, who knows? Catholics are stupid. They dip it than in us. the wine, I think. Do they? Yeah. Oh. I think. They dip it in the wine? Don't they? Isn't that the movie? He doesn't fucking know. He's Jehovah's Witness Episcopalian. He doesn't know what the fuck they do. Really, I wish this was an Oreo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, whatever. But yeah, I don't... The Episcopalian and Protestant, I have no idea what that could possibly... You know, Protestant, I guess, is not Catholic. Yeah. He's the freshest not Catholic. Right, right. And then there's all the fucking weird American ones where they're talking in tongues and shit, which I don't know what the fuck you would even classify that bullshit as. That's even stupider than Jehovah's Witness somehow. Yeah. He's like, hello, boy. Dude, I, that, those are my favorite videos. Yeah. <laughs> I will that remove a- the devil from you. <laughs> yeah. And a guy, a guy in a wheelchair <laughs> falls out of the wheelchair and then stands up. So Beautiful. much, you get why that existed when you're like, oh yeah, they didn't even have radios, those people. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, let's go see something. I'm fucking bored. Yeah, right. And they're just being entertained and they think that's God. They're like, yes. oh, this is pretty fucking fun and interesting. <laughs> this is so much better than just sitting in the fucking barn yeah. or whatever the fuck. And they think that's fucking, like I saw a TikTok one time where some... I don't remember who it was, if a girl or a gay guy was talking about how how they <laughs> thought they're they, interchangeable. Uh, yeah, well, I, for, <laughs> for the purposes of this, they are because they were talking about how they loved like praise music and yeah. things like that, and they loved the gospel. And then they went to a One Direction concert, and they're like, "Oh, I just love concerts. <laughs> like God is fucking stupid." And I think so much of that happened with like all the like, especially like preachers that were basically like somewhere between stand-up comics and, like, singers yes, and shit like yes, that. Yes, You were just fucking poor and broke and had nothing to do, and it was a pretty pretty eventful, entertaining yeah, afternoon yeah. when they're just like, blah, 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 the devil comes out of you, you know? And they probably, a couple of them probably had, like, parlor tricks that were almost, like, vaudeville and magician shit where they yeah. were probably like float looked like they were floating and shit yeah dude all comics if we were simply believers could have gone that route easily you know e- and we will the church of <laughs> the church of Go- jehovah goku the church of goku jehovah yeah <laughs> um yeah okay so i damn. might go back but that's that's how much my dad just deferred to my mom. You know what I mean? That's how much it's like whatever was, whatever she says. Really, really. Yeah. So so he he was in there too once. It wasn't like a thing of like so he was like, My my wife will really be into this. They come back, <laughs> your mom's like, This is fucking awesome. Yeah. And the whole family from then on is just Jehovah's Witness. So yeah, I mean I I I think I imagine that she probably I've kind of 
come to this realization since having a kid of my own because when you have a kid it's yeah. just it's like you're wearing it's like your heart is on the outside of your body it's terrifying yeah, totally. you know that anything horrible could happen at any given yes, moment every moment you're, you're like yeah uh, you're so desperate to protect them i honestly think that she probably heard about this as fucking bonkers as, as it is for an educated woman to yeah. to be like yeah okay this yeah. makes sense I think she thought, like, all right, this is like a cheat code on life. Like, guys, I found the secret. You just do this, you'll be fine. So you'll be saved. interesting. Even if you die, you'll be resurrected. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. you know, ultimately, you'll be fine as long as you are a believer. That's an indictment on having children, if I've ever heard one. It's like, <laughs> yeah, this woman who's intelligent had kids and was so worried, she believed one of the most clearly bullshit of a ton of very bullshit religions. <laughs> It's scra having children scrambles your brain so much <laughs> that my mother thought this was the right move. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. That's what those dude. 90s anti-drug campaigns should have been. Yeah. This, this is your brain on the watchtower. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I get it. Sometimes it just hits you when you're looking for meaning at just the right moment. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, what is different about really what's, if we really break it down, is there anything different? from what they're promising that every single fucking religion, not right. really. It's all right, the right. same shit. Yeah. It's basically like that joke about like, you know, it's like Taco Bell where it's like, whether it's a quesadilla, a taco, a burrito, it's all the same shit and slightly different yes. wrapping. Exa That's exactly. what every yes. religion is. It's yep. Mexican food. Yep. It's like enchiladas, quesadillas, yeah. whatever the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Yep. So, you know, not to shit on the J-dubs too much. Shout out to Jehovah. <laughs> I think all religions dumb as fuck. It's not just you guys. Um, but yeah, it is interesting to... Yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses you typically think of as like black Mormons. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like you yeah, just yeah, think yeah. of it as like... Because it's both the little tie and the white shirt. Yep. And then usually the Mormons are the little, you know, the little white boys. Yeah. But you were one of those for... Yep. We, I got confused for a Mormon all the time. Yeah. <laughs> And people are much more friendlier to Mormons because I think Mormons take no for an answer. Right. You know, they just smile. Are you a Mormon? No, Jehovah's Witness. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like it's like revulsion. Well, Mormons uh, are and Utah. I've been to Utah a couple times. They're so insanely polite there. It's fucked up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I guess I could see that. Whereas like, I mean, not that I knew any really rude Jehovah's Witnesses, but like, honestly, the Jehovah's Witnesses I knew were just like kind of kept to themselves kids yeah, and like, yeah. Kids I grew up with who like wouldn't, they just could not do anything. Do any like when the yeah. the holiday party came around, they're like, "Sorry, yep, no holidays." Go right? sit in the library by yourself because you're not allowed to praise <laughs> anything but Jehovah. Yep, and so it's so all pagan. How old? How old were you when this? Were you like? Wh how old were you when this happened? I was so my born? my parents had me very late. So so yes, my right. siblings were 18, 16, and 14 when oh I was born. Oh, my. Okay. So they were all already like, this is bullshit. We're over this. So when how? So this happened during their lifetime, but you were born into it, basically. Yes, yeah. Dude, how old was your oldest sibling when it happened? Do you know when they converted? I think they converted when he was when he was still a toddler. Maybe oh, he was wow, like okay. two or three. I think they had just adopted so my oldest brother. So interesting, yeah. dude. What the fuck? And we're like, okay, we really want to protect this kid. <laughs> And ensure a fuck? safe future for our family. That is so fucking is stupid. That is so fucking dumb. Dude, and, my, and the rest of my family ridiculed my mom nonstop. Nonstop. Yeah, I mean, imagine if, like, one of our, like, yeah, ma dude, imagine if, like, Nick, my brother Nick, who's just, like, you know, yeah. just a very, you know, smart guy, runs a business. Like, if he was, like, after he had a kid, if he was, like, yeah, I'm Jehovah's now. Yeah, yeah. that would, we would never stop mocking him for the rest of our right, lives. Right, right. Yeah. It became, like, an ongoing, so my mom's uh, whole family lived up in New Hampshire. Her dad yeah. had a dairy farm, and her sister and brother lived up there. Every time we went up there, it was, like, an intervention. <laughs> it was, like, Joan, what are you doing? <laughs> You're ruining this kid's life. <laughs> and I was like, I'm making good points. <laughs> God damn, that's so fucking funny. Yeah. That, that is, go ahead. Sorry, so when you when you were like a kid or growing up or whatever, were you like, this is fucking bullshit all the way? Did you grow out of it? Like, I mean, I thought it was, I, I, that's the thing. Like, you don't realize how insane it real. is until yeah. you go to school 
and you realize how other people are living. Right. Uh, and also, like, as a kid, although, like, you've seen their publications, right? You've yeah, seen yeah, their yeah. tracks, right? And the, yeah. That depict the paradise yep. with, like, kids frolicking around it in does a field with a lion. I will say, that is... <clears throat> to the, a kid? Oh, to sure. To a kid, yeah. like, I remember as a kid picking it up a couple times. Yeah. Picking up a watchtower and being like, this looks like a fuck... Because, again... We did grow up in a weird time right before internet. We don't have phones. Yeah. We don't have shit. So it's like, I remember I would see them in like, they would put them out in like libraries. They would put them out just like random places. And it's like, that was in the like magazine era, Highlights Magazine. Yeah, yeah. Disney Magazine. All that shit that a little kid would do to like uh, kill time. And I picked up a Watchtower multiple times because not only do they have the cool Paradise one, but they had the like. Oh, it's happening! Armageddon one that looked oh, yeah, like yeah. an action movie. Yeah, and well, you're, like it had the fucking big lightning like a bolt death and the metal album. Yeah, cover. dude, yeah. big lightning bolt with a watchtower like ominous in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Whoa, this is fucking sick!" <laughs> and multiple times, my mom was like, "Put that down." <laughs> we do not. We believe. We believe in Jesus. You know, like multiple times, my mom literally the disdain. And my mom was not. My mom was a very. <laughs> Incredibly liberal and like left person for <laughs> being like a Greek immigrant. Like my mom was very, you know, not just like economically, but culturally very like accepting of everyone when that was not how most people were. Yeah. But when it came to like, for whatever reason, Jehovah's Witness and like just strangely like the religious part of like, she wasn't crazy practicing religious, but it was like this thing where she was like, ah, she was like, like, oh my God, disgusted by my the idea that I would be interested in any of that, yeah, you know, yeah, and it, it yeah. was so fucking funny. <clears throat> I remember, but yeah, they were the, they knew what they were doing with the like the oh, they put of them the everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you would find them in the library. I saw them. I don't remember. If, I I don't remember where the fuck I would see them. But I yeah, remember. They, I, I think, mean, that's not crazy. I think they the public library because we would go to the public library a lot to yeah. like kind of kill time. My mom would leave us there sometimes. Yeah, and you know, you just like we would if you couldn't get on the computer to play Streganona. Or uh, or fucking you know uh, uh, what were the good what were the good games on the computer Streganona, Corner in the World is Carmen San Diego, yeah. and then you read a book for a half hour and you're like this is fucking boring. You would just start wandering around and yeah, I found them at the at the at the library, the Enoch Pratt Free Library, and somewhere else I just remember seeing and now I see them, and now it'll happen to me as an adult where they have them in like my laundromat. And yeah. it'll catch my eye, and I'm like, damn. I'll leave him as bait. Dude, yeah. I remember going to the local bookstore in Ridgefield with my mom and having her be like, I'm just going to leave this on the shelf here. Yeah, leaving yeah, a washer yeah. on the shelf. Yeah. And be like, whatever fucking poor teenage sap that works here is like yeah. an after-school job is going to find that. Be like, why isn't this on the inventory yeah. list? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Are we supposed to have more of these? <laughs> yeah, you don't know that it's supposed to be. And Watchtower yeah. is so... It's good. And look, Jehovah's a good name. This one says Zion's Watchtower. Just powerful stuff. Sounds cool. It, yeah, All that shit it sounds does. cool. I'm able to now objectively look at this stuff and be like, all right, yeah, that's pretty badass. Are they I still, are they, st or are your parents dead? <laughs> are they still? So my mom, yeah, my mom died when I was 17. Okay. And that was, that was my out. Yeah. That was my out. <laughs> Dude, your dad's like, all right, well, this is tragic, <laughs> but at least no more fucking Jehovah's Witness shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's so funny that it just straight, the second your mom's gone, they're like, everyone's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. that's enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. dude! Damn, that's fucking wild. Did you have any I successful? Had nothing to do with this. Did you have any successful conversions when you were going door to door? Uh, no. I had people that were uh, when I was really young that would take the literature just to be nice. You, were a you know, kid. just like I'm not gonna slam the door in a cute little kid's face. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But they had you out uh, there working since you were like seven. Yeah, yeah, that's dude. Hilarious. Yeah, it was fucking child labor. Yeah, and dude, summers were brutal because like in the summer. Uh, so not only like during the school year, like you said, all the J dubs that you knew, like keep a low profile, low so, profile, like, didn't I, even know until it was like, you wouldn't even know until they didn't want to be involved in like the Christmas pageant right, right. or the something you're like, Hey, why isn't she singing? Yeah. So, you know? Yeah. yeah and yeah. she was a good, like, I remember one girl was a good you singer. She's suddenly like this fucking anarchist badass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she was, there's just one little girl who was like so shy and like really nice. And yeah. I don't remember how we even caught like. She would just sing sometimes at like, and you could tell she wanted to sing at the Christmas like thing so bad. Yeah. Every, all these shitty singers, and she was just like, 
I can't, you know, and just like <laughs> took it, took it. I would remember being like more mad for her than yeah. she was, but at the same time, I was like more fucking shine for me. You right, know? I was yeah. ready to tear down the Christmas. The Christmas uh, pageant, you know, with my pipes. I used to think I could sing when I was a little kid. I wanted to be a singer. That's Just like cool a fat little five year old that's like, oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> silent night. <laughs> that's cool that you say that though, because like my biggest fear in school was telling people that I was Jehovah's Witness and getting outed and getting mercilessly bullied for it. Yeah, dude. So I, I kept a very low profile. Like, you know, I would go to the library when there was a birthday celebration. Right. I couldn't go to school dances, couldn't play sports after school because you're not allowed to hang out with anybody that's oh, not Jehovah's Witness. you couldn't play sports? No. Wow. So, like, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses are homeschooled, which yes. is smart because yeah. if you really want to keep them in that bubble, right, right, like, right. You, once they go to school... For That's sure. where everything opens up to For them, sure. and they're like, "Oh my god, these kids are actually enjoying life." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're having cupcakes you know? and shit. Yeah. No, I remember always feeling bad because it was like. They they can't have a cupcake for the birthday. Yeah, I remember being yeah. like, "What the fuck is this?" Like I for whatever maybe that's and don't get me wrong, I was also a bully as a child. But that was the <laughs> one. Like I'm not trying to say I'm some fucking. That was off limits. I don't. But for whatever reason, I just it was such a tangible thing where it was like, and most of the time they were so bummed. You could see they yeah. just wanted to be little kids. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, dude, I would have kids like save me like a little, even like save me just like the rapper. Yeah. You're and I would get back to rapper. class and just suck the crumbs out of the wrapper. <laughs> well, especially for you because it's like no one is. I'm guessing no one's Jehovah's Witness in fucking yeah. Connecticut. Yeah, I was the only. I was the only one, dude. I was the only one. <laughs> and and we haven't even gotten into the fact that yeah, your fucking siblings are so much older than you. That's also yeah. fucking weird. And they're not Jehovah's Witness, probably right. They were very, you know, as long as they were living at home, they kind of had to identify as such right, and go right, through right. the motions, but right. they had one foot out the door for yeah, as soon yeah, as they yeah. could, you know, yeah, like, yeah. cause it was, it was, that's the thing. If you come to it on your own, great. Like if my mom wanted to practice on her own, fine. Yeah, yeah. But to like force a kid into that. Yeah. That that when they don't feel like they're missing something from their life, it's what, so fucked What up. if your son was like, dad, I just picked up this awesome book. <laughs> What if it's just he has your mom's dumb jeans? <laughs> he's like, he comes to you one day, he's 12. He's like, I was I was in a bookstore. I found this book that I didn't have to, someone had left there. And I decided to read it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Just like, <laughs> Dad, if you really cared about my future, you would let me die as yeah. opposed to get a blood transfusion so right. that I could be resurrected. That's another weird one. <laughs> I remember that one. That was so fucking weird. Yeah, dude. So I had to, I had to carry around one of those no blood cards. Wow. Wow. My first day of school. Insane. A legally dude. binding document. That's fucking crazy. Signed by both my parents. <laughs> like, yeah, it'd be very easy to save his life, but don't. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. He's completely not allowed to be in the 144K <laughs> if he gets that. God yeah, damn, dude. dude. So, like, but all that, all that literature, all those uh, pamphlets, all those illustrations, to a kid, that's enticing. They like, I cool. remember looking at that as a kid, be they like, cool. yeah, frolicking around in a field with a lion, that looks yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, badass. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you hit your teen years, and you just want to fuck. <laughs> yeah, and, of course. And sure. you're like, unless that lion gives head, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. and it might, though. <laughs> you know, In Goku's, in Goku's Jehovah, <laughs> he does, the lion gives head. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's absolutely, I mean, yeah, I, I guess teen is when it all starts. Yeah, it, it all starts, and I would assume that's the real test. I assume there's very you're not allowed to get pussy in Jehovah's Witness. Like you're not allowed to in any other. No, no, yeah. nothing all, that nothing could lead pre-marital. to premarital sex. So that's why a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses get married when they're like, dude, 18, 18. 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a similar Mormon thing where it's like they get married at eighteen, yeah, have like four kids, yeah, and before they know it, you know. Yeah, it's it's sad, dude. That is so interesting. What do you are you because you got a kid? He's like what eight now? We were talking. Yeah. What are you thinking in terms of like does is your wife any kind of religion? Do you no? Do you, 
she was she was raised she's jewish okay. she went to hebrew school for a few years hated it left yeah she was not like practicing at gotcha, all gotcha 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 um but we lean into that for him just for the holidays you know what mm. i mean like i live vicariously through him now like it's like dad. christmas and hanukkah yes, let's dude, fucking do it man really, yeah. <laughs> live it up oh uh, okay so you're so he gets both he gets yeah, all yeah, the yeah. holidays you didn't get right yeah right. <laughs> yeah. yeah hell yeah dude. and like he does he has no interest in sports or after school activities hilarious and i'm like dude but you can yeah, yeah, so yeah, fucking yeah. do it <laughs> you know yeah, and yeah. unfortunately, like I, I have like weaponized the whole uh, going door to door shit. Like if he's like bored on the weekend, he's like, I don't have any friends around. What mm -hmm. am I gonna do today? I was like, What is this? Does this suck? Is this not acceptable? Just be hanging out at home? You yeah, want to go yeah, fucking yeah. knocking on doors? Yeah, with me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put the clip on tie on. Yeah, put the want... clip on tie on. <laughs> Forty minutes of going door to door until you fucking are are happy to be home playing your switch. You yeah, ungrateful yeah. piece of shit. <laughs> That's so yeah. fucking funny, dude. So yeah, just yeah, I wonder about that because it's like so he just gets to believe whatever the fuck he wants. You don't care. No, 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 no one's no. religious in the no. family. But like, like he was bummed today because he's in camp right now. Mm -hmm. He's at this awesome day camp. He's an amazing artist. He's an nice. amazing fine artist. Hell yeah! And he's going to this art camp where it's all art classes all day long. And he's bummed. He was bummed today when I dropped him off because his two buddies that have been with him this whole time are not in camp this week. And uh. he was like, "This is gonna suck. It's gonna be so boring." Yeah. And uh. Again, I was like, don't fucking threaten him with going door to door. <laughs> yeah, <Nope. yeah. laughs> don't do it. <laughs> yeah, don't tell him how much worse it could be. Um, but like, yeah, if, if I uh, if I was to if I was to suddenly, you know, I was born into it. So I didn't know any difference. Right. I never celebrated right, Christmas. Right, I never. Right, right. But if I was to tell him like, hey, man, starting tomorrow, no birthdays, no Christmas, <laughs> no hanging out. All your friends, they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. You can't hang out yeah, with any yeah. of them anymore. <laughs> Damn, so you this didn't even how have your friends. weekends are going to be spent. Yeah. He would be, he would be fucking suicidal. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> what, what I was trying to say earlier was like, he was complaining about camp today right which is like it's so hard for me not to be like dude you have no idea how good you have it because, oh yeah because during the summer my mom made me one month of the summer i had to choose to uh to do auxiliary pioneering that's a, ter <laughs> a term they use which i had to spend i had to spend 60 hours in uh -oh. one month going uh -oh. door to door oh my god 60 hours 60 hours yeah jesus so i was dude. out every day for in a couple summer, hours in shit. the summer yep praying that my my i was not like you know knocking on my like my bus route or something of course of course you know? of course and nothing like, worse than seeing somebody you know yeah dude so like most kids thank god took pity on me and didn't make fun of me yeah but the 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 title of the podcast jehovah boy comes from this one kid <laughs> yeah. who answered the door <laughs> and was like what the fuck are you doing here <laughs> And then the next day on the bus in front of everybody, oh, it was like, no. like wasn't even looking at me. It was like, Doug, wasn't it crazy when you were at my door yesterday? Oh, no. And I was like, shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> it was like, fucking Jehovah boy over here trying to convert me. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking brutal. Yeah. But yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it is so interesting to think about the difference between your, like, you'll just, everyone ends up being, now anyway, this is a pretty modern phenomenon. It didn't used to be this way, but everyone pretty much, everyone ends up being a completely different person than their kid. Yeah. It's like, and this is a very modern thing where it's like, you go to Greece, you go to my family up until two generations ago, everyone was pretty similar, you know what I mean? Like, or at least you got like three or four generations of similar before some kind of like shift happened. Yeah. But it's just like now it's like, yeah, you're, you, I mean, you had a bizarre, upbringing. there's no way you could raise a kid like you. You yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> you're, it's one thing to be Jehovah's Witness, another thing to be a weird, you know, Connecticut convert because yeah. your mom had a kind of went insane <laughs> after having kids, after adopting kids. It wasn't, you can't even blame it on chemicals. Exactly. She adopted her first kids, right? Yeah, yeah, are you yeah. the only, are you the only non adopted kid in your family? Um, two, you two, uh, two, uh, and two uh, four right? total, two and two. two, and two. two. Yep. Okay. But you, so yeah. So maybe it was a bit chemical, whatever, but still it's like, but still it's just so interesting how different your experiences are than like a Brooklyn little artist you know what i mean yeah. like a kid who gets to actually 
and not just had a couple art programs here or there, but like you're putting him in art camp. Yep. He doesn't have any interest in like sports or any. It's just, yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah. Do you ever think about like, it's just that always interests me because I'm like, that if I ever to have kids or like, elder, you know, like we grew up fucking poor when we were little. And it's like automatically if any of, if we have kids, their lives are better than our lives were. Yeah. Automatically, we don't have to do anything. Right, We've right. been to therapy. Our dad's, you know, hilarious. The idea that they would even <laughs> consider for one second yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh what God, impact yeah. they were having on their children yeah. emotionally. <laughs> that they would even think about it, yeah. let alone analyze that, right? <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know. You, you actually have, you know, for me, it's all theory. But yeah. you actually have a kid. Is that, like, interesting? Like, I don't know. Because he is different. He is, like, and you don't want to... I guess that's a form of bullying is telling him how good he has it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And it's really hard not to, because yeah. He, doesn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he doesn't know what to compare it to. Yeah. You know, he didn't live that way. Of course. But even, yeah, even outside of Jehovah's witness shit, like, like, uh, growing up here as opposed to rural Connecticut, Yes, you know, like I remember, uh, it was, it was just all rich white kids, yeah. you know? And like his first day of kindergarten, I remember him telling me about, oh, I met this kid today, Michael. Michael, Michael's my new friend. Telling me about this kid, Michael, all week long. Yeah. And then finally, you know, finally on Friday, I picked him up from school. And he's like, bye, Michael. And I finally see Michael for the first time. And in my head, I'm thinking... Michael's black. Good for you. <laughs> oh, my kid's a good guy. Oh, my kid's not racist. <sighs> oh, thank God. No, that, that yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. How did you not lead with that? Yeah. that was, he that doesn't been, even know. The first thing I said. He doesn't even know it's yeah. impressive <laughs> that his first friend at school's black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is the, there's definitely the positives, right? Of like, yeah, each generation especially here you get less racist and you get less yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know uh it, it really is the yeah you're almost like it's such a you're you're creating such a like like accepting nice kid that um he's not like you're some tough guy but you almost feel like the it's like the 1950s dad versus the rock and roll son yes where it's like that's how nice your kid is that it makes you look like a tough guy oh even yeah, though yeah, you're yeah. not you yeah, know what yeah, i mean yeah. like you're just you're also a pretty <laughs> sensitive artistic guy but right, like compared right. to like by comparison a brooklyn yes. like kid who has an easel yeah. at age four yeah you know you're yeah. you know you might as well be uh, the fucking the, the honeymooners. You might as well be hitting yeah, your wife. Dude. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because my dad like grew up, you know, kind of like a farm kid, mm -hmm. uh, gun toting, conservative, yeah, racist. Yeah, like, Ulysses S. Grant's great, 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 great grandson. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I thought that, that was all normal to me. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, that was cool. Uh, yeah, like holding yeah. up in the basement, listening to conservative talk radio. And, <laughs> Making your own bullets, that's totally normal. <laughs> Making your own bullets. That's why don't even trust the liberal bullets. Yeah. Don't even trust the mass mass made yeah. bullets. God oh. forbid there's a misfire. Turn you queer. Oh, okay, okay. I see what's going on here. Your dad was like that and QAnon didn't exist. Exactly. So oh, your Jesus, dude, yes. your mom would have been Q to the max <laughs> if it was if they caught her right now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. oh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> I wonder how many like Republicans that are Q now would have gone to some kind of right? culty type thing. Oh, yeah, back yeah, then. yeah, yeah. There That's were just point, there were sure. just less options for it uh-huh i yeah. door to door makes a little more sense now because if the internet didn't exist you could make a killing going door to door q anon at trailer parks and like <laughs> and like the shittiest you know the shittiest you know white suburbs the the yep. white flight suburbs that still that are somehow worse off than the cities they left <laughs> yeah. every, every city has one of those uh yeah. you could make a killing but yeah. now we have the internet the inner so. city's like you guys do too many drugs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no truly i mean we have one of those in, uh, in fucking baltimore where the fuck did my phone go it's right there shut up eldish <laughs> But yeah, dude. By comparison, even though I'm such, even though I'm such a far cry from my dad. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Suck my dick, Elvis. I caught my phone in the microphone. Something bit me. Shut the fuck up! Don't you dare! 
Don't you dare use the laugh track. I was just, wow. Well, how long is the uh, first segment? Because I feel like I could talk to Doug for two hours about this shit. We're at 57 Okay, right let's see. Yeah, okay, let's switch. That's, all I was trying to do was check the time, folks. But, uh, you know, God forbid my producer understand what I was going for. <laughs> maybe give me some kind of warning. You guys are having a great time talking about this, but maybe. Anyway, you got to come back, Doug, because there's so we, we've barely scratched yeah, the we, surface. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, Doug, your life as a Jehovah's Witness child was strange and interesting. Anyway, uh, I'm sure you're a college football fan, Doug, aren't you? You're nodding. We're not showing it, but Doug's nodding, folks. Well, Doug and college football fans everywhere, rejoice, because week one is right around the corner. DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking you up with a can't-miss offer to start the season strong. This week, new customers can bet just $5.00 on college football and score $200 in bonus bets instantly. Instantly, baby. Anything can happen in college football. It's like Elvis' sex life in college. Who knows? Are we getting lucky? Are we getting jacked off in some bushes? Are we, <laughs> are we gonna smooch a nice girl? Are we gonna meet the love of our lives? Who knows? Your team can go from the lowest of the low, a little scrub, to a dynasty, all right? You could be winning back-to-back -back chips just like that. Uh, change comes fast. The only thing that's a lock is the great offers from DraftKings Sportsbook. That's right, baby. Uh, I'm pumped. I, I'll be honest. I haven't, I've been doing my betting the old-fashioned way up until now, like a caveman, like a dunce, like an idiot. It's so annoying. This is so convenient. I've got the app. I've already started looking at some beautiful NFL futures. Okay, I'm going to put a little money on the Terps in college football for old time's sake. That's where Elvis went to school. That's where I got alcohol poisoning on his couch multiple times. I'm going to put a little, you know, I'm already looking at the O's for the MLB playoffs. You know we're winning the fucking World Series. Uh, I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm throwing. And when NBA season comes around, I know it's a long ways away. But I'm, you know I'm putting, I'm going to make a little money with all my expertise. And you can too, folks. Okay? It's fun. Is there's nothing like throwing a little a little cash, by the way, that you can afford. Don't be crazy. This isn't the way you get rich. This is for fun. Throw a little extra money on the game. And now and now a regular Wednesday game, something you just threw on, who cares? Now it becomes you got a little action on it. You're 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 like, I care if bowling green wins. I got them on the under. I'm watching this. I need a little meaning in my life. And our friends at DraftKings are happy to provide that for you. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code STAVVY, S-T-A-V-V-Y. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on college football. Five bucks, you might shuffle a little 200 bucks. They're giving away cash. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code STAVVY, S-T-A-V-V-Y. We're very excited to be working with DraftKings. The crown is yours, my friend. And just <clears throat> just something, uh, you, Doug, you wanted me to tell you about. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, KS, 21-plus age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario, See dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Thanks, guys. Um, but why don't we take you have a very you have a very uh uh your you your perspective is very I don't think we've had anybody with this kind of background. You yeah. know, so I think you're gonna be very useful when we uh solve our friends' problems here. So Ellis, why don't you play a nice little Nice little fucking call for me and my friend Doug here. Hey, Stav. Uh, Eric here. I think you and all this rock. Thanks, dude. Um, love the podcast. Uh, so I've been married for 16 years uh, to an awesome woman. I got three kids. Uh, she's uh, got that awesome, fat ass, you nice. know, white girl ass. <laughs> nice, man. Love it. <laughs> Pussy's awesome, too. It's amazing. Uh, here's the That's thing. We sick, grew man. up really conservative. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we're still conservative in some ways, but, I mean, honestly, uh, we're different people now. Uh, but here's the thing, man. Never been to a strip club. Okay. So, like I said, 16 years in on marriage. It's been great. Um, 
And, uh, you know, so I'm just looking for some ways to uh, maybe bring this up. Because here's the thing. I'm not going to be a <laughs> douchebag and go there behind her back. Behind her back. And uh, just from oh, talking geez. with friends and whatnot, uh, honestly, uh, it's, uh, I guess it's something couples do. I mean, I'll, hell, we'll go. I'll go there together. I mean, I'll go there. I'll go to a, a male strip club <laughs> or strip whatever club. with her, what? you know. No big deal. We're not jealous. Like you just want to see people. naked people. You know, Take a life drawing <laughs> class. We spend so much time together. We feel so comfortable around each other. But still, something I'd, I'd like some uh, suggestions, some ideas on how I can bring this up and not seem like a total douchebag dad. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Thank you. Very interesting question here. Very yeah. very interesting. He clearly loves his wife. He doesn't want to. Ch- it's almost cute. This question is almost like adorable. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, geez, I really want to go to a strip club. It's so but sophomoric, right? I, I just don't want to see some boobies that yeah. aren't yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go behind my wife's back. <laughs> so he wants to go with her, it sounds like, right? No, he wants to basically know like how to broach... Asking her for permission to go. But basically. he also said something about I hear couples go. He said I hear, I hear some couples like might go to a strip club together. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I mean, this is kind of easy as fuck. You you can't make it seem like it's your idea, right? It's yeah. the boys are going out. It's somebody's birthday, right? Like you have to you have to like create a fake scenario where Leave some strip club pamphlets on the countertop, yeah, Jehovah's yeah. Witness style. <laughs> but yeah, oh, you, what's this? Yeah, what the hell? Tits? <laughs> just a pamphlet that says tits on it. Just a picture of tits. Whoa, this is very interesting. Um, yeah, I here's the easiest way I would do is like get, you know, someone. It's someone's bachelor party. It's someone's something. Somebody's birthday, and he's like, hey, the fellas are all going to. You know, I just want to let you know. You know, just part of it because it's you're not you're not going to a yeah. fucking brothel. This guy also maybe doesn't know that you don't get to fuck the strippers, <laughs> right? Because right. he sounds really nervous. You're just looking at tits. You're throwing them a little money. Maybe you're getting a lap dance. He should go there with like a hundred dollars cash. Leave all his credit cards at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? yeah. This man can is liable to go crazy <laughs> yes. at his first sight of some not not his wife pussy in real life. Um. But yeah, dude, I think that is, I mean, the fact that you're willing to go to a male strip club, you're ready to go to Magic Mike, is so fucking funny. Uh, that's how bad you want to see tits. You're like, look, I'll look at a cock. Yeah. I'll Some watch. well-developed pecs will do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll watch a bunch of old ladies get wet if it means I can go to a fucking strip club. Um, so yeah, dude, I I would suggest you find some kind of, like, group outing that you could go to a strip club for the first time and, you know, it's easy. And then and then if you want to go with her, you'd be like, hey, you know, it was a pretty fun time. Maybe we should check it out together. Yeah. That could be fun. Right. I could see that actually being legitimately pretty fun for a couple to do. Um, so I think that's your way in. You ease in with a, you're like, look, I'm being dragged to this thing. Yeah, exactly. Make it make it sound like he doesn't even want to go there. So like, I'm just trying to be a good buddy, yeah. just trying to be a supportive buddy. I don't Not, want would the be guys my to top make... pick, but. Right, 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 right. Have you ever gone to a strip club with your with your wife? No, I have never. No, no. I've, not, I've not been to a strip club in, Jesus, probably t- 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've uh, never with a girl, though. No. No. I always felt that was never really my thing. Just sitting yeah, there with your dude, just rock hard. I honestly know. don't. It's like, I really would rather, like, it's just, I just have to look at these hot women and not fuck them. It's torturous. It is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Now. Yeah. If you were allowed to negotiate fucking them, perhaps, yes. <laughs> perhaps I would be more interested <laughs> in this kind of service. And I'm willing to spend the, pre- I'm, you know, fair fair market price, of course. Yeah. But I got to just fucking not. It's like, bringing, like, a, a, it's like bringing a kid to a petting zoo and tying their hands behind their back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch the lamb. Wouldn't you love to see, wouldn't you love to be friends with this llama? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't you love for this llama to spit in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, dude. But yeah, I think that's your way in. I think you're good. And I think uh, I love what you guys got going there. It seems like you got a really cute relationship. We're rooting for you, pal. 
Here's with another one, Big L Dunce. Hey, Stav. Hey, Ellis. Uh, big fan of the show. Been uh, listening to listening to it ever since it came out. But, oh, man. Um, Thank you, brother. I have a bit of a conundrum lately. Um, so, uh, this girl that I was um, hooking up with for a while, I uh, found out through social media recently that she's pregnant. She's uh, having a kid. Um and like she's oh, man. with her boyfriend and everything, like uh they're together, they're getting married, I think, they're engaged. Um but like I didn't even know she was in a relationship and like I didn't really pay attention to her social media or anything like that. I looked Mind through the timeline your own and it business. sure looks like to me, at least, that she and this guy <laughs> were together. Well, me and her were still hooking up. Now, I'm not this kid's father. Uh, I know that for sure. Okay, um, then who gives a fuck? The timeline doesn't work out there, but um, I'm just wondering, like, should I try to reach out to this dude and say that, like, there's a good chance that, like, Pause the this. mother of your child was cheating on you in this relationship? Uh, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? What the fuck is wrong with you? So a woman is nice enough to give you some pussy, and it sounds like she let you raw dog because you had to do some math to make yeah. sure. It sounds like you were dumping loads inside this lady, and you had to do the math to figure out you're not this kid's dad, and you want to go blow her spot up? By the way, you don't know what the fuck was going on with them. You don't know what kind of weird fucking white trash, you know, <laughs> a white trash open relationship, which means they both cheat on each other thing they got going on. Like, this is crazy. Like, you, you can't. This is insane to fucking. I'm a little confused, though. What is this part? I should try to reach out to the student? What's the student? No, no, that's the dude. It's just, oh. For the folks at home, we have Google transcription that's sometimes not. To the dude? Oh, should okay, I try okay. and reach out to this dude? All right. Or do I just leave it alone? Yeah, play the rest of it before I go in on this guy. Uh, or do I, do I like, just leave it alone for the sake of the kid, like the having kid. a healthy family life. For the sake of the kid. <laughs> because that's where I'm How leaving, about the sake of you not being really a bitch? Bad, like, knowing that this Feeling was probably really going on bad. in this relationship and that I was the instigator here. Anyway, I really appreciate the advice. Thank you. What the fuck is going on here? You yeah, fucked this bitch body. four times. You think you have to get, you feel bad not saying something? You should feel bad getting in and fucking her whole shit up. You don't feel bad about that? These people, you have. This is the kind of guy who raises his hands like, teacher, you forgot to give us homework. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> teacher, I fucked your wife's <laughs> pussy when you may or may not have been cool with that. When it may or may not have been your business. Yeah. And I'm barely in this woman's life. Dude, I don't give a fuck about any of this. You first of all, you shouldn't be checking up on her social media. That's fucking weird. And you're and you're going through the timeline. To, you're like, I looked through the timelines, and this guy might have been together. You don't fucking know what they had going on. Mind your own business. This is fucking snitch behavior. We do not exactly. condone snitching. It does not affect your life whatsoever. This is in the past for you. Would you? You don't think let's we well, you don't even know she's done anything bad, right? You don't right. know for a fact. You don't know were they on again, off again? Was he cheating on her? Were you a rebound? Like you don't know the context at all. And also, let's say she cheated on this fucking guy. Let's say she, you know, you guys hooked up, clearly didn't go anywhere. Let's say your dick was maybe your dick was so bad it led her back to her ex. <laughs> and you actually created this family, right? So you never know. You might have done something good. But let's say she made a mistake, cheated on this guy, and then realized, holy fuck, I should be with him. I'm a fucking asshole. I want to start a family together. I'm so in. And out of nowhere, because you're bored and we're going through your Instagram stories <laughs> one day, you ruin her whole fucking life and his fucking life. He doesn't. Yeah. He, first of all, if you have gotten cheated on and it's a one time thing and no one's ever going to be the wiser, would you like to know about that? Because I fucking wouldn't. I would like to let sleep. <laughs> I would like to let sleeping dogs lie. OK, you're being a fucking busybody snitch cocksucker. Enjoy the puss. Have, be grateful for the pussy you got. And don't go, you don't know the context at all. And even if it's, she was a piece of shit, why you got to stir stuff up, man? Yeah, he should feel like a fucking champion that she was willing to possibly throw her life yeah, away for his snitch ass. There you go, dude. Take it as a compliment and move on. Yeah. And in general, don't, guys, don't get involved when you don't need to fucking get involved. One of life's most classic lessons. Stay the fuck 
keep mind your own business. Don't snitch. If someone's not fucking with you actively, don't start up a fucking shit. St- oh, you feel bad. No, you don't. If she had told yeah. you I have a boyfriend, your dick's in her pu- about to hit her pussy. She's like, I have a boyfriend. Would you have stopped? <laughs> if you would have, then you at least have a case. But I know you wouldn't have because you didn't use a condom. So you weren't, you weren't thinking clearly about how you were fucking anyway. So shut up. It's easy to feel bad now. Would you have felt as bad right when you're... Di- That's the ultimate test, by the way. If you ever want to say something, would you have felt that bad when your dick's moments from breaching her pussy? And if you wouldn't have, then you have no case, okay? Also, you got to anticipate revenge, too. If he blows up her spot... Absolutely. You know? Exactly. She could be fucking... She could be a psychopath. Yeah, what do you think she's going to be like? Well, that was fair. I was yeah. cheating. You ruined my life, but I'm not going to act... I'm not going to act in any other way. That's a great point, Doug. You could completely start a chain reaction. By the way, you would deserve whatever was coming to you. Yep. you would, and even if you wouldn't deserve it, it would make so much sense that you would get something coming your way. So you're yeah, being a fucking be, asshole, dude. He might dude. be checking his rear view for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this woman might kill you. I also, yeah. like, I also love that he's taking the moral stance on such flimsy back-of-napkin math, like, well, oh, this pic of them was like, wasn't that around yeah, the time? Not- but but I love how he's like, the kid's definitely not mine. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah, he fucking, yeah. like, really did the math on <laughs> oh, that. Oh, yeah, like. yeah. And listen, I've had to do some of that math myself. <laughs> back in the old, in the raw-dogging Baltimore days, <laughs> I had a panic attack when somebody, you know, Said she was having a kid and didn't post the dad, and I was like, ah. <laughs> but I was I was clear, thank the Lord. But yeah, dude, you're a fucking asshole for even considering this, and I hope you're shame you're you're adequately and thoroughly shamed uh, after hearing this response. <laughs> God damn, dude. Uh. <laughs> hey, how's it going? My name's Mitch. I love you, Stav. I love the podcast. Love you too, Mitch. Uh, I'm just gonna get right to the point. I've been hooking up with this girl for a while now, mm-hmm. and her uh, pussy just absolutely reeks. Reeks? <laughs> I don't know Ugh. if it's like a like a genetic thing or like a diet thing, diet. but it just smells. Even when we're just sitting on the couch, oh, watching no. that, man, I can smell it. <laughs> And it's like not necessarily the worst thing. Not I guess. the worst like thing. Uh, like my weird primal instincts are kind of into it, but it, it is pretty overpowering and, and kind of gnarly sometimes. So, gnarly. my question to you is: How do I nicely bring it up without giving like a dick? All right, thanks so much. I love you. You're the best. Bye. Anytime, anytime an adjective can apply to a pussy and a very large wave, yeah, that's a big problem. Bring it, up, bring it up in some Mad Men role play. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, these dames with their stinky cooters. <laughs> yeah, is there an episode where Don Draper <laughs> is advertising douches? <laughs> you should just be like, this is a really interesting scene, and rewind it over and over again until she gets the hint. <sighs> this is a tough uh, one. Thank God I've never been put in this position. I don't really know how I'd handle it. This is a tough one. Um, yeah, I haven't either. I, I, I did go down on a girl after she was a rich older woman who took me out to a steak dinner wow. and I did not realize until I went down on her that we had asparagus that night. <laughs> Have you ever gone down on a girl after an asparagus pee? I'm, I'm Dude, assuming I almost it threw stings. up on her stomach. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, rich older woman take you out for a steak dinner. That's my boy. Yeah, right? How'd, how'd you swing that? Just some, she was, she was nuts. She was this nut, nuts photographer that I met at like a, a gay bar I think she was gay, but she was like That's rebounding. Awesome. She had just left her husband, and she was rebounding. To get I think she was gay, but still kind of not yeah, really kind of on the fence. Yeah, uh, yeah. You were at a gay bar hanging out. Yeah, I had a friend that bar that I had a f- female friend that bartended there. Hell yeah! So dude. I went and just like hung out with her <laughs> yeah. and met this this woman. <laughs> That's pretty and, sick. Uh, dude. You got a little pussy at the gay bar. <laughs> yeah, right. Did you ever get sucked <laughs> off by a guy at expecting. the gay bar? <laughs> no, no. Hey, you never know. <laughs> But I, uh, good for you. I would have preferred that. Yeah. I think <laughs> to, the, to the asparagus pussy. Yeah. Um, I think asparagus. If I'm remembering what asparagus, and you know, I, I'm an asparagus fan myself. I I only know it from my own piss, not licking a pussy that's recently <laughs> had asparagus. But I feel like an asparagus 
is better than whatever he's describing. Yeah, yeah. At least you know the reason behind that. You know the reason behind it. You just got to power through it. Uh, Talk about doing the math. (laughs) ah, Dude, this is... uh, Well, I've been hooking up with this girl for a while now. It can't be that big of a problem. Also, like... On the couch is hysterical. This bitch has... This bitch has stink lines coming off her pussy like <laughs> like garbage in a Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> Just green waves. <laughs> he reaches down her panties, pulls out a fish skeleton. Yeah. <laughs> Heathcliff. Yeah, his eyebrows singe off when she takes her panties <laughs> off. Um, pretty overpowering is fucking wild. Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you here. Is it like stink? Is it like, does it feel unhealthy? Or is it possible that some, you know, you meet people who have bad BO. Yeah. You meet people that just like fucking, and they don't look, they don't look dirty. And right, they just, right. they just have, they just hit you with a wave of like, God damn. Yeah. This could be a legit, this is a legitimate medical condition. I've heard about this where it doesn't matter how much washing or douching you do. It's wow. just like a, you know, rotten pussyitis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, stinky pussy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you've been hooking up with a while for her with a while. I feel like I feel like, yeah, some pussies do just have a smell on them. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, like you guys are saying, like it's not about your health or anything necessarily. Like that just a natural scent it might have. And that's like the proof for like pheromones. There's someone out there for that pussy. Oh, smell. yeah. I mean he even says yeah. it's not over it, 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 he says uh he's kinda into it sometimes. Yeah. So this might be a double-edged sword, which is like you might have the first time, the first time that you met this woman, you smelled some of her pussy scent, and it kind of it it like turned something in in you, and now you're like ooh, now you're now you're outside. Yeah, because this this woman, she is fighting a lot of smells in the real world, right? <laughs> so her pussy has to be real, has to be like, and she's put the intensity up. You've turned it up, pheromones-wise, because it's fighting, you know, you're at a bar, a lot of bar smells, musk, you know, alcohol, other people. This has this pussy cut through the noise and got to your <laughs> nose in the real world. And now, now yeah. when it's just you and the pussy face-to-face, I'm sorry, it's going to be a little more powerful yeah. than, uh, than what you're used to. But what do you want to say to her? You want to be like, hey, um... Hmm. Hey, you're cool. I know we're pretty casual, but just would like you to know. I don't know where this is going, really, but your pussy kind of reeks. Yeah. Your gnarly pussy reeks. In my plus mine, in my pros and cons list, your pussy stink is heavy. It's like two cons. It takes up two pros have to cancel it out. How thoughtful you are and the way you make eggs are the only thing that are canceling out how fucked up your pussy smells. <laughs> but if you clean that up, I'm ready to propose. But that is a good point. What is the next step here, pal? Because if you want to, like, date this woman, but you're like, look, I can't, this is a little much. That's one thing. But if you're like, I think I'm just going to fuck her five more times, but I prefer her pussy doesn't smell. If you're not, if you don't want anything serious, don't broach the pussy stink subject. <laughs> Just keep keep going for that gamey pussy. Keep yeah. fucking that gamey pussy until it's run its course. But if you want something a little more, you know, uh, if you want something more uh, serious potentially, you might have to kind of like, you know, bring this up somehow. Or, or I don't know. Does she have a does she have a, an intimidating gay friend? You could be like, hey. Hey Maurice, <laughs> Sally's pussy's out man. of control, man. It's not gonna you. you for <laughs> some reason, gay men can be very mean to straight women, and they see it as a compliment. Yes. So can you tell her her pussy is not giving? Can you tell? Can you tell her her pussy is not ironically being very cunty right now? <laughs> I love that cunt is turned around. It means like hot now. By the way, that's fucking awesome. Trans trans people who we steal who uh, it goes black trans women to black women to gay all gay men to gay white men to uh, other the rest of us and they really that was really smart when they started making cunt mean hot again or whatever it means some kind of nebulous positive 
Anyway, yeah. that's what I would say. Get her, get her, you know, get a scary gay guy, you know, to do it. He could, he could also just go super passive aggressive with it and just stop washing his balls for a month mm. and see if she says anything to him. And then if she says anything to him, we'll be like, well, or you know, put a little you're light. one to yeah. talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, I thought we're just, it's the gamey genitals club. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, put a couple, put a little sardine oil in your foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> Ferment, make some kimchi in your foreskin. <laughs> the hunger gamey genitals. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I don't know. Think, is it really a problem? Can she, do, does this woman strike you as someone who doesn't wash her pussy? Because it might just be her, you know, body chemistry. Um, or you could, while you're yeah. eating her pussy, or how about this? Put, <laughs> you're fucking her, right? You put a condom on, but you put... A little like, uh, you know, St. Ives or whatever at the end of the condom. And then you break the condom while your dick's inside. And you kind of force her to douche her pussy out. These are some Mission Impossible style solutions. Gadgets. Gizmos. Or you could, how about this? You, uh, you, you go, you, you take. You a okay. bar of soap down from the ceiling. Dan, da, dan, da, dan, yeah, dan, yeah, da, dan, da, da, da. How about this? All right, ready? You're like, let's go out for a nice little, uh, you have to, in this, you'd have to get a moped or a, a tandem bicycle or something. You're like, let's go out for a nice bike ride. Wear a skirt with no panties. It may, it'll, it'll, I'll, I'll find it sexy. And then you go through a car wash. <laughs> and so, <laughs> And it has like that fucking brush comes on her pussy and just really foams it up nice. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck are we doing? You're like, yeah, shut up. Yeah. So we've given you some Get the really. guys to hit it with a vacuum at the end. Yeah. 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 Take a shop vac to it. We've given you some very, very good, actionable yeah. uh, pieces of advice. And the rest is up to you, Mitch. Good luck, my friend. <laughs> Hey, Sab. Um, I have a question. So, um, I just want like a male perspective on this, and I feel like you'd be off be able to offer really absolutely. Good ones. That's so, what we're here for. A couple of months ago, um, I was cleaning out my fiance's car. He's like a dude, and um, <laughs> I found in like his middle console of the car, um, like one of those dick pills. That you get at the gas station, okay, like the rocket one. I don't, yeah, I don't know. But um, I've been out of the gas station like, dick pill like game for a while. Thing. <laughs> and I know for a fact, like he's never with one of those out in front of me. Mm. But we've he's never really had a problem getting hard unless obviously he like drinks too much or whatever. And sometimes, yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so like it's never been an issue for us, and I've been with him for three, almost four years. So my question is, like, it's, I, in my mind, it's super suspicious. So what I want to know is, do you think he used that hmm. to cheat? Because I have a problem of, like, getting really drunk and falling asleep, and he'll, like, be up the rest of the night, or, like, drinking or whatever. Hmm. Or Hold on, pause he this. Say, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? You have a problem getting really drunk and falling asleep and he'll be up the rest of the night? Okay. Like drinking you've, or whatever? You've been ga This woman's already we pre problem alcoholics and we have... Uh, I mean, yes, they're both alcoholics, but th she just... She just... This man has completely fucked this woman's head up. She's like, you know, I have a problem of getting really drunk and falling asleep and he'll be like up the rest of the night, which is like... You do the natural thing when you're drunk. He's clearly annoyed at her for falling asleep and he's kind of... Already said it in her mind that this is a defect. <laughs> She's like, I have a problem. So anyway, that's red flag number one. Some might be a little off, but anyway, keep keep going. And they're both alcoholics, of course. Yes. And just be like naturally insecure, and he just wanted to try it out or whatever. For reference, he's. Uh, I'm not gonna give his age because I don't want to give it away. But he's older. Like, okay, not old, but like. 30, early 30s, okay, so, like, it's not like he's the fuck, I'm 34. a problem with that. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, um, let me have a two page Okay. A couple interesting things here. A couple, this is a, this is something, something's, uh, so she's like, now, option one, the happy option for everyone, he's been secretly taking dick pills in this relationship because he's never had a problem getting hard unless he's drunk or whatever. Uh, so that's that's the option here is that like he's 
been and I've been in a relationship where, you know, I wasn't secretive about. It was more of a don't ask, don't tell dick, <laughs> dick pill policy, you know, where when I was actually finally when I was secure in the relationship, like I at first I used dick pills uh, to just I like to open up with a shock and awe. You know what I mean? The sure. like just really go out there with a very hard dick. And then when you're not, you know, you don't this is when you care about a woman. Ironically, and most very fucked up, my dick will struggle out of the gate when I actually have oh, feelings sure. for someone. Absolutely. And so I have taken some early dick pills and then I phase them out. Now they're And the dick pills you were taking, were they gas station dick pills? Well were they prescribed? I luckily I did and see again, this is <laughs> Folks, how many times, to the big dick pill companies, how many times do I have to tell you you're losing money every day not sponsoring us, okay? Um, and I, so the, right here, native advertising, you're, you're fucking stupid. And Matt, right now, do you understand I could launch into a nice little conversation with my friend Doug here talking about the exact type of dick pills I take and... <laughs> how how effective they are and how they changed my life. But you're not going to get that, are you? <laughs> no, Doug. This was during the era of gas... I kind of... I was a little scared of gas station dick pills. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I haven't taken some. But I also... This was an era before you could get... Now you can get dick pills like they're bubble gum. Yeah. You just go online and there's like 1,800, you know... Right. Any of which we would love to have here on Stavi's World. But back in the, the, what I used to do for a while, there was a guy, well, I had like, <laughs> I would talk about uh, dick pills on Come Town, and then like sometimes fans would send me dick pills, like <laughs> to do me a solid, which is hilarious. And one guy told me about, there was a research, I talk about it in my special, in my first special, there was a research lab where you could get different chemicals, but like in pipettes, and it was for research purposes only. And you, there was no way to, you had to Venmo a guy and he would be like, put something else in the subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'd be like, lunch. <laughs> and so I like would Venmo a guy who worked at a research lab and he would send me like a little fucking bottle, a liquid bottle of like, I guess it was like Cialis or whatever. And yeah. you were supposed to take like just a little bit of it. Um, so that's what that's what I was on, and of course I would be like, nom, nom, nom. You know, I would take <laughs> way too lunch. much. Yeah, I would take way too much. I am but, stuffed off the Cialis. So uh, yeah, so that was kind of where I was at. You seem like a man whose dick has been hard his whole life. I mean, I have the Never opposite really problem. problem. I've had you premature bust, ejaculation bust problems, quick. so yeah, I, gotta, yeah. I, I need to get super that drunk, is, drunk so it'll cooperate or punch yeah. it a few times. Or, I will, I will say that is the nice, unconscious. That is the nice thing about yeah you yeah you gotta you're you're a cla you're a classic gotta get one out first guy. Huh? Yes yes yeah. yes. Not me Absolutely. brother not no. me that one is the hero nut that first nut I I cannot lose that first nut because yeah. the second one is coming out <laughs> dribbling the second one is coming out like drool like drool in a special ed kid's the corner of its mouth that's how that second nut's coming out. Um, it is nice to ha to not bust quick, and I also have a fucked up foreskin, so that it actually has allowed me to not bust fast. Which yeah. is, these are God's, you know, these are Jeho Jehovah Goku's little, little, you know, silver linings. A fucked up foreskin? Does that mean there was a circumcision gone wrong? There was not a circumcision no gone circumcision. wrong. I just have a tight, I was born with a tight foreskin. Okay. So it will, every once in a while, you'll get a little, you're about to bust, you'll get a little like, ah. You know, because yeah. it just it hits it the wrong way. The but pain will be a, you kind of reset nice distraction. Yeah, yeah although yeah. sometimes you can't. Anyway, we don't have to get we don't have to get into my dick anymore. <laughs> we gotta. I've 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 you know I'm, I'd love to come back. We'll discuss more about your. Up, we even get into your adopted siblings, <laughs> and we'll talk about your adopted siblings. We'll talk about my fucked up penis for <laughs> okay. the next one. So anyway, option one. That that's all to say he might just be taking dick pills behind her back. Yeah, that's totally possible. I think that's I think plenty of of guys kind of because a lot of this is like it's a challenge to your manhood kind of thing if you have ed problems and you don't want to sure. think about why it's happening you don't want to it's not the kind of problem you want to lay off either because you're like well i'm not gonna stop getting pussy yeah while i figure out what's going on so maybe i'll just take dick pills and not worry about it and maybe you know unfortunately this sometimes it is like uh uh, if he's a healthy guy, it can be like, uh oh, what's going on here? You should talk to your doctor about sure. it. Um, and he now, may already be self conscious. It sounds like there is an age difference here. Right. Like he that's may true. Be yeah, he's as so old. old as his early he's to just mid -30s. in his fucking mid 30s. 
Uh, <laughs> but but yes. she may have already given him a complex about their age difference. So True. if he has any sort of yes. issues at all, yes. he's yes. going to think yes. that she's going to think. Oh, true. That's a possibility. I'm fucking this old man who I'm can't get it this, up. Oh, this ancient man whose cock yeah. barely works. Um, now, at the same time, he's never had problems getting hard, mm-hmm. she said, other than when he's drunk. But that, now that begs the interesting question of, has he been taking dick pills the whole time? Because let's say he's never had problems getting hard with you, and now he's cheating, but he's taking dick pills? Wouldn't you think yeah. he'd get harder for the thrill of cheating? Or is this a I guy... So or Okay, so... Or has he been taking dick pills with you the whole time? You don't know it. And he also is cheating, <laughs> and he's also <laughs> taking dick pills to cheat. Um, those, those, are your, those are your options, is... He doesn't take dick pills with you, but he takes him to cheat, which doesn't make any sense. Or he's been taking dick pills the whole time secretly, and he's not cheating. Or he's doubling up on dick pills and using them both to fuck you and to fuck someone else. Yeah. Those what are if really this our is options. the girl with the stank puss, and he has to take the dick pills <laughs> to overcome the stank puss. Yeah, that's a good question. To, to the past, to the other guy answering, your dick still is getting hard, right? So the puss is not that bad. I did one time, actually, now that I think about it, I think I've talked about this where... I did, there was uh, some, a girl after she busted, something happened where her pussy started, kind of went wild, too gamey, yeah. and I literally, like, I was eating her pussy, and then I just, like, I was like, oh, my God, like, it kind of, it hit me like a skunk, like a spray <laughs> of a skunk, and I just, like, could not stay hard to fuck, and she just ended up sucking my dick until I busted, yeah. but there, I have, yeah, so, I gotta go to the guy, a bath and tomato juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm getting fucking uh, what, what, DoorDash, 800 cans of tomato. I'm getting a fucking what's the what's the uh, grocery one? Cam- Campbell's. No, no. What's the grocery uh, delivery Post-made? service? Is that is, no, no. Fuck anyway, yeah, we blew it, Post-made? guys. <laughs> we had if we if I remembered that app, that fucking riff would have been probably 10 Hello percent Fresh? better. <laughs> Some no, not Hello Fresh. What's the like shop the Fresh Direct? Yes, one of those, yeah. but a competitor to those that sounds better. Uh, <laughs> Look up delivery grocery services, and we'll answer your question at, at some point. We just have to really get uh, grocery delivery apps. Instacart, that's what ah, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instacarting tomato juice cans to pour on my face after getting after eating stinky <laughs> after pussy, getting folks. Stink. That would have been it. That really, don't We don't deserve the claps. Tear them off. We don't deserve them. I fucked up. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, back to the stinky pussy guy. Your dick's still getting harder. Pussy can't be that stinky. That's another thing to think about. Anyway, back to our friend here who's worried about getting cheated by her fiancé. Um, certainly finding a dick pill... Okay. You're, by the way, because it sounds like this guy's older and you say you have a problem getting really drunk and falling asleep and he'll be up the rest of the night... It sounds like there's a little bit, of, and the age difference, it sounds like there's a little bit of gaslighting going on in this relationship, mm. right? It sounds like, it, I don't know, maybe I'm off, but doesn't that comment of her saying she has a problem getting really drunk and falling asleep, doesn't that seem a little bit like he's kind of maybe done something and she's been like, what do you mean you got drunk and crashed the car? And he's like, <laughs> well, you were fucking asleep and you know I'm up all night. Like, it sounds like that something like that happened. Like, what do you mean? You know what I mean? Like something, he did something stupid and he uses her problem. As, that's just my vibe that I'm getting. That's a, It's an interesting fold in there. She said it like it's a normal thing. Like it's a normal happen. thing. It's which very is very glazed over. Very glazed over, which, which tells me that like there is a little gaslighting here. So just to speak to you from a male perspective here. At a minute, if you find some kind of sexual device that you've never used with your fiance before, or not haven't, in, to your knowledge, used with your fiance before in his car, that is at least grounds for you to confront him about it, right? Like, and the the answer might be, "Hey, look, I'm embarrassed. I take dick pills a lot when we hook. That's why I don't. That's why." I've never had a problem is because I'd never want to let you know let you down like you caught mm-hmm. right. That's honestly the best thing you can hope for. If he's weird and flustered and kind of like blah, 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 you know whatever, it's like you know well when you were drunk and falling asleep, uh, I was bored so I bought dick pills and beat <laughs> off. Like you know what I mean? Like I want to at least support you here in terms of like you have the right for an explanation 
And it could just be like it could it could very, you know, very reasonably be. Sorry, I've been taking dick pills the whole time. I'm not my dick doesn't get that hard. I'm self conscious about it, so I've been overdoing it. And it might be a nice, it might be a nice thing in your relationship where you kind of get this guy off dick pills together and you you know start your life au natural together. And we already know Elvis is staunchly anti dick pill. As opposed to me, who's a big pro. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. Can't jeopardize your dick's future to have a, have a steel cock. It ain't night. about the future, man. I'm not trying to get pussy at 70. I'm trying to whittle and eat apple pie. I'm trying, These are my fuck years right now. I'll eat pussy as an old man with my dentures out. I'll gum that clit like you wouldn't believe. Uh so yeah, I don't know. That's that's it's just also like it doesn't. Say, it's, there's not a problem here. There's not a problem well, with their sex life. The problem is, is he cheating on me? Right. right? Like right. I've never seen him use a dick pill. I found a dick pill in his thing. So like, I think you should just have a conversation. Honestly, and I hate I hate when the converse, the advice boils down to, but eighty percent of the time it boils down to have a conversation with this person. Yeah, and you will learn a lot about whether this is an issue or not for you. But you are at least, don't don't think that you're being crazy bringing this up. Because my hunch is he will try and gaslight his way out of this in one way or another. That's just my hunch. I don't know this guy at all. That's just my hunch. Just age difference plus that little drinking comment makes me feel like some, you know, he might just, even if he's, even if he's not cheating, he might just try and steamroll through this. So we just want to let you know here at Stabby's World, you definitely have a point. You definitely deserve an explanation here, and you're not being insane for asking about this. Now, what would be insane is if you didn't have the conversation and you went straight to steal, you know, spying on him, looking at his phone, you yeah. know, you know, hiring a private investigator, or whatever the fuck. That would be crazy. So, that's my that that's our advice to you, my friend, and good luck. Um, Good luck, and you know, hopefully, he just has a soft dick and isn't a cheater. <laughs> Doug, do you mind Am grabbing I? my phone from there, my friend? Yeah. <laughs> Am I gonna fuck things up if no, I take a quick no. piss? No, no, no. Take a quick, sure. take a quick piss right now. Right. Okay, folks. Doug's dick has been freshly yeah. milked. We're ready to go. How about bring us home here, Eldis? Hit us with a nice one. Hey, stuff. Uh, love the podcast. Love the content. Uh, appreciate it a lot. Thanks, Dad. Uh, keeps me going. Um, I am caught in kind of a predicament here uh, with my fiance. We had a we had a baby a couple of years ago. Everything's going great, but uh, when it comes to our sexual life, it isn't uh, quite. Adic- adequate, I could say, I guess. Um, and we've talked about it quite a bit. She just doesn't have uh, the sex drive that I have. Uh, definitely a higher libido person compared to her. And uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's really about how attracted we are to each other. When we do have sex, it's, it's great. Um, but it's just not frequent enough. And it, yeah. <clears throat> I've told her that, you know, it could become a problem in the future. Uh, yeah, I've even tried. <laughs> That's what I'm about to do. I get too fucking backed <laughs> up. To, Might be yeah, a I've fucking problem. <laughs> <laughs> I do. The funny thing is, I know what he means, but it's just so funny to to phrase it that way. Yeah, it's like real mafia. Like, it'd be a real shame if <laughs> I cheated on you. <laughs> if you're too sad to suck my dick. <laughs> Love you. Love our son. Love you. Everything's great, but a man's got a bust. Or he might do something crazy. (laughs) 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 All right, let's finish. Some call it Jewish lightning. (laughs) (laughs) I might be looking for a new wife after you tragically pass away right after I take out a big life insurance policy on you. (laughs) Okay. Finding solutions, trying to, you know, bring up the conversation of opening the relationship. Ooh, ooh, uh, ooh. Didn't go well. I'll tell you. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Not great. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's it's a tough it's a tough situation. I just wanted to hear what you might have to say about it. Uh, 
appreciate it, man. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Keep hanging out. These specials are great. Thank you, brother. Uh, yep. Thanks, man. Um, okay. So now our friend here, did he say his name up top? I'll just scroll up. No. Our friend here, uh, you know, him and his fiance had a baby a couple years ago. Everything's going great, but the sex life isn't, right? And now, look, you can speak to this, Doug. You're, in a, mar- you're a happily married man. There, there's some dip, I would assume, in every, in every like, married couple. But, yeah. you know, does it get to this <laughs> these levels of, like, desperation or whatever? <laughs> this guy, you know, there's some, there seems to be a little... Anyway, I, why don't you talk as the... Mar- give us the married man's kind of breakdown on the general situation, and then we'll go in more... More, uh, you know, more detailed here because I have a couple thoughts. I can say from experience that, uh, you know, being a parent just it drains you, man. Right? She's exhausted. She's, you know, she's not focused on you as much as she is on the kid, which right. means she's a good mom. Right. You know, so be grateful for that. Yeah, the sex is definitely going to take a dip. Talking, talking about <laughs> there's going to be a problem. Yeah. I'm backed up, <laughs> guilting her to any degree, putting right. any sort of pressure on her. That is only going to shut out down her libido even more. Yep, yep. Open relationship. That's not going to fucking help either. Bad. You fucked up with that one. Pal. His only hope is to be as much of a turn on to her as possible. Right. Help out around the house. Be a good dad. <laughs> Praise yeah. her as a mother. You yeah. know what I mean? Your only hope here is to really rev her up and boost her ego so that she wants to fuck you again. Yes. You know? and, and part of this might be he hasn't understood that the way it might not even be a libido thing so much as like now that things, you know, now that they have a kid and they've been together for a while, the ways that you turn on your partner are different than when you were single. Exactly. Everything yep. you just said. Like you would like as a single guy in your twenties, doing the dishes, taking out the garbage, yeah, and being like that was really awesome the way you fed that kid applesauce. <laughs> that's not getting you pussy when you're twi- when you're twenty six, right? But when yeah, you're it, you know, but when you have a kid and you know whatever whatever age you're at, when you have a kid, that same sh- that's gonna get you pussy way more than like flowers and getting her drunk are gonna get you. You yes, know what I mean? Like yes. going out for a nice. Whatever, like, because no, they're worried about. But yes, that's. I'm glad that you said all those things from from actual experience, because that was a little bit of my kind of my hunch here yeah. was that you're clearly more. You're kind of halfway there in terms of how you're approaching this, because you're having a conversation about it, which is good, right? You're not. You're not like. You're not being like weirdly passive aggressive about it. You're just. You're talking about your needs here. Um, and that's fine, but I think you didn't complete, you didn't you didn't finish it with like looking a little more inward, right? Where it's like, yes, it's possible that you have different libidos, but it's also like, are you helping out as much with the kid? Like, is yeah. she more drained? Is does she not want to? Is her life just way more annoying than yours? And maybe she has some resentments about that, and maybe that's not turning her on, and she's just overwhelmed and too tired. And is are your like? Um, are your duties like equal? Like, are you as stressed out and worried and tired every day as she is? Um, even if they're not equal, could it be that this, that just having more, you know, are you helping out equally with the kid? And even if you're not, could it be that it affects her a little more? I'm not saying your life is easy. I'm not saying your job is easy, but you didn't really have to do some kind of huge. Bi- literally biological change here mm-hmm. um, that she had to. So things are the same for you. You're looking at things through this similar lens. Try and look at it from her perspective, not just yours, right? Where you have communicated like, hey, this is kind of like, this is hard for the relationship. But you went to, there could be a problem and I need to fuck other whores <laughs> fast, <laughs> right? You went there a lot faster than you went with changing a diaper every once in a while. Yeah. What can I do for my girl shit? So... That would be, and look, maybe he has, right? It's a possibility he has, and he kind of left that out. My hunch is you haven't, right? (laughs) But if you haven't, I would start there. I would look a little inward, right? Think about what what Doug told you to do. What can I do to to make it easier on her? He's lived it. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. And, um, and, And I think that's step one. Also, just working on the relationship. Not just the physical, not just the physical, like, work that needs to be done, but, like, 
you know, if there's a pro- if there's a problem like this where there's a switch in libidos and you're not, you know, the way we were just talking earlier, how like ED can be a sign of uh, different health problems for a guy. Like it could yeah. just be blood stuff. It could be your heart. It could be a lot of different stuff. Sex life dropping off is almost like it's like the ED of a relationship where it's like even if everything else seems good, if you don't want to fuck as much. There could be a problem somewhere that need. There's a problem somewhere that needs diagnosing. Yeah. Right. If you're that drastically different, so is couples therapy a possibility? Like you clearly have no problem stating what you want. Maybe she was just kind of like, she she had thoughts on that conversation that she didn't feel comfortable saying at the time. Right. She might not be as open. She might not be like, hey man, like, I just it's you know she's like. She obviously didn't like the open thing, but she didn't, she wasn't like, that's not the problem. The problem is I'm fucking, t-. like, it might just be easier for her to open up with another person. So I would just say, work on the relationship first and foremost before you start worrying about how many nuts a week you get off. That's yeah. not the biggest before problem. Before you bust here. a load, bust out a load of laundry. Yeah, yeah, there that? you go. There you go. Yes. Also, like, yeah. rather than making it her problem and putting the blame on her, he can still speak up for what he wants just by being like, what can I do to. To ensure that to we have a more here. active sex life. Absolutely, exactly. You know? This is this is like not yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, I think that's you're you're almost there. You're close. Yeah, you're close, buddy. You just have to kind of turn, really think about turn it inward a little bit and think about you guys as a, as a holistic partnership where it's like uh, these are you know because I'm sure. In her dream world, she has a more active sex life. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. Like she in her dream world, thing, yeah. she's just like she's just at this point is kind of like zero in. Or, or maybe I mean it's all, that's why I say also think about the relationship in general because it's like this could be the kernel of something where maybe maybe she is kind of maybe she is a little resentful of you. Maybe you're not because you're not helping around, and maybe she is even if she doesn't understand it, withholding sex. Just because she's like doesn't like how you've been behaving the last couple of weeks, you know what I mean? So, and maybe she can't, she hasn't been able to say that because for whatever reason, right? So, work on the relationship, see what you can do in general as part of this team, and you know, don't worry about your nuts per week as much as like kind of rekindling something. Um, because it, it sounds like you guys talked about it, but it doesn't sound, it sounds like you got. Halfway there, but it's not like he got quite there with what's going on. Yeah. In my in my very very limited opinion here, um, you want to do a quick one, Eldis? One more. Yeah. You got it. That was a pretty good one, though. I'll give you credit. <laughs> that was a real nice one. Something. Yeah. Something cute to take us off. Hey, Tom. <laughs> quick question. On a scale of one to uh, Italy, how racist should I expect Greece to be? Mm. Trying to plan a trip in October. Just wanted to hear your opinions. Any island should I avoid? For reference, I'm black like Shaq. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> one to Italy. Okay. Um, Is this an inside uh, baseball No, thing? no, no. It's just no? Italy's, you know, they're just fucking animals over there. These oh, Italians. like the most racist European yeah, country? Yeah, yeah, okay. They're pretty racist yeah. for sure. They're, yeah, they're like <laughs> Spain too. They're like throwing bananas at African players and shit like that. Jesus Christ. I will say this about Greece, right? Um, I've had friends who like, I've had like, you know, Greek kids I grew up with who were like, got really into like, you know, Greek kids who were like gay and got into like social and they were like, I'm going to go back to Greece and I'm going to show them like it doesn't because their their dads are homophobic. So they think yeah. you go back to the motherland and you're going to like fight and be heard. And like it's going to be like a, almost like their own little civil rights struggle. And then they get to Greece and Greece has been our economy is 80 percent tourism. They love everyone who comes and spends money. <laughs> no one gave a fuck that they were gay. No one yeah. treated them weird. And what you'll get, so that so what you'll get in Greece is like you might get people calling you Shaq or Michael Jordan. You will get like fun, get ready whimsical. For compliments. You will get fun whimsical racism. Yeah. You know what I mean? You might get someone asking, you know, you might, because Greek people are also pretty vulgar, as you can tell. You might get somebody talking about how big your dick is. You know what I mean? Like, you might get, like, that kind of, like, you'll get the fun little whimsical parts of, they might be like, yeah. oh, you know, fake, fake reaching for their wallet. You know what I mean? But, like, not actually scared. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what's up? You know, like, yeah. that kind of stuff. 
You, yeah, you want your ego stroked with a slew of new credit cards. Yeah. Just go to Greece. <laughs> like, dude, okay, for example, actually, this is a fucking, this is a perfect example. I was in Greece. <laughs> I'm in Greece with my girlfriend at the time, and, you know, we're a couple fucking New York cosmopolitans, and this, like, really, like, striking black couple, older black couple, retired, like, you know, in their 50s, 60s, but really well put together, they kept calling them Obama. <laughs> like that's they kept every and we we're like and me and my girlfriend had to be like, hey, we're so I had to be like, I'm sorry. For you. Like I, and they're like, but they weren't like it wasn't like you're scared for your life. Yeah. But you're un, or scared that the cops are gonna. But you're like, all right, man, how many times are you gonna fucking call me Obama? And he was just he didn't look like Obama at all. He did not look anything like Obama. He had longer hair. He had, you know, he was like more. He was darker skinned, but he was just a, a, a like a striking older black man, yeah. and everyone called him Obama. So that's like literally, dude. Four different waiters and like random Greek people were like oh, Obama, you know, like that to that extent. <laughs> waiters, so people like, that serve you, literally, no, 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 and like kept bringing it up to the point where me and my me and my, the Only girl the I was with for the leader of the free had world, to be like Jesus, and it's like, you guys, are yeah, sorry <laughs> about this, and they're like, yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? They they just kind of like they didn't laugh it off because it clearly happened enough times where it was yeah. annoying, but that's what you're looking, f that's what's gonna happen to you in Greece. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I would just say that, but again, beautiful place, fucking awesome. October is a great idea. Early October might be the best time to be in Greece because there's no tourists. It's kind of emptied out, but the, but it's still pretty, especially on the islands, it's still pretty warm. Now, in terms of like, you know, any opinions on islands, all that kind of stuff, I tell people to go, I think a standard good thing to do is go to the same chain of islands that the ones everyone has heard of, Santorini, Mykonos. All those, Sandorini and Mikono, like those, everyone knows those. Don't go there. Go to the other islands in that chain. So there's islands like Naxo. I love Naxo. My, you know, my godfather lives there. Um, and there's a bunch of other. I, I sent Ari Shafir. Actually, he'll be on the pod soon. I sent him to a little island called Paro. Uh, you know, I want to go over there. That's where I'm going to go next. But yeah, just go to go to the like where, they're, where it's touristy, but not you know, crazy packed. Although to be honest with you, in October, you actually might be able to go to like Santorini, Mikono, all the, all the, all the like, uh, all the classic ones. Uh, but here's a little thing about Santorini that people don't tell you. The, the view is unbelievable. You go for the sunset. The sunset is crazy. The beaches kind of suck dick over there. The <laughs> beaches are not good. They're really not. Um, so if that's, it just depends on what you're looking for. But Race wise, you'll be good to go. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna be like you know, railroaded by the local police or anything. You're just gonna, people are gonna keep calling you LeBron James. That's pretty much it. Uh, but have a good, have a good trip. Call back, buddy. Let us know how it went. Um, that's gonna do it for us, guys. This episode. Thank you so much, Doug. Thanks for Thank coming, you, man. brother. Of blast. course, super fun. Uh, Jehovah boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jehovah boy. Jehovah Check boy. Listen to the pod and uh, yeah. Check out Doug. Anything else? Anybody else? That's it, man. That's I'm it. Taking a break from the road for the rest of the summer. Love but it, yeah, dude. Just uh, hit that pod. Hit that pod, baby. Uh, love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.